Good evening. Would councillors please take their seats? Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'd like to call to order the meeting of the PBD City Council Industrial Community Development Committee. Members are myself, Councilor Saslar is here, Councilor McGinn is here, Councilor Rosignol, and Councilor Sharis. Also in attendance and welcome to participate is Councilor Masoulis, Councilor Melville, Councilor O'Neill, Councilor Manning Martin, Councilor Turco. Councillor Gravel. Um, there's a lot on the agenda tonight. We're going to uh, actually hear from the mayor. I believe the mayor's here. I'd like to speak. Welcome, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Councillors. Um, I just want to maybe open the meeting up with a few comments and make sure that uh, we're uh, all in agreement as to the topics of discussion today. I certainly think uh, as a community it's important for us to uh, always look at uh, different parts of the city uh, always look at our zoning ordinance to make sure that we're adapting to changes and and that um, you know we continue to make sure where our language is updated and the different parts of the city that we're always keeping an eye on to make sure that um, projects would fit in with different neighborhoods and, and different areas of the city so to me the zoning ordinance is a living breathing document that always has to be reviewed always has to be looked at and always have to be examined for ways to improve the city and to help out neighborhoods and to help out uh, potential residents, potential business in the city. So I think these meetings are important to have a general discussion and, and to talk about specific areas. I just want to make sure it's very clear that uh, there's a number of items that are going to be discussed today. Um, when I sit with community development, um, often um, when we meet with potential developers, potential businesses, there's some that we dismiss out of hand. But then there are others that I think merit and deserve discussion, a review by the council, review by the neighbors, re different residents in our city, uh, to discuss different items and see if it would fit into our neighborhood. I can tell you right now that there are some that are op open for discussion that I am very strongly in support of, and there's some that are uh, in for discussion on the agenda that I'm very much opposed to. Uh, but I think it's worthy to discuss, to put it out there and have open and frank discussions and review the different proposals. Some are proposals that have been brought by residents, developers, elected officials, and uh, we want to make sure that all those different items are reviewed to see what would fit in our city and what would be good for our future. Um, so I think that's something that we continue to, to have to have and, and have to discuss. Uh, one item that's on the agenda, I think it's today, is the J.B. Thomas, which I have a very strong interest in the property on King Street. Uh, that's one that I've been concerned about for a a number of years now since unfortunately uh, there was the hospital failure there and they sold the property to a new developer. Um, um, the uses that were being proposed for the J.B. Thomas were very concerning to me. Um, facilities that, um, medical facilities, treatment facilities that I felt would not fit in with the neighborhood at all and large housing development projects that I did not feel would fit in with the neighborhood at all then it would be a detriment to the neighborhood. Uh, the new owner is willing to work with us. Um, we're looking at 55 and over, which I think could be a good use for that property, as opposed to the other uses, which again concern me. Uh, but um, that item, and I know Councilor Charis has worked very hard on this project, um, is not ready for discussion. We have to have a community meeting, and I think Councilor Charis is going to speak to that. We had a meeting, what was it, a year ago, Councilor? Uh, when there was an initial proposal that was made by the, uh, the new owner of the property. And uh, there was a great discussion, a lot of comments made by the neighborhood, and we need to have that meeting again. And I think you were going to set something up very shortly. Uh, so I would like to see that put on hold until we have a neighborhood discussion and can meet with the neighbors and discuss that very item um, and see what the latest proposal would be for that property. And I know, Council, you're going to speak to that. I know that's what you believe as well. Um, so some other important topics today, I'm very intrigued and very interested and supportive of the Pulaski Street project, particularly the commercial uses, the commercial expansion. Uh, we have a gentleman, uh, Ed Greeley, that has uh, really um, inspired me with his vision for that property. I think Pulaski Street um, is an area that um, 
needed some upgrades, needed some improvements, and we have a gentleman, Mr. Greeley, who is putting in a great deal of time, effort, and money uh, into that property, and I think this really made some great improvements to it. Uh, there needs to be an expansion of commercial use. I think there's going to be discussion on residential. Um, that could be something that we need to look at in the future as well, uh, but certainly hoping that we can expand the commercial use and then maybe in time look at residential as well. Um, but commercial, I think, is needed for that area. This is certainly some others that I think merit some discussion, some other projects um, that I have um, some interest in, but others that I'm very concerned about. Um, and certainly I think I'm very eager and anxious to listen to the council's opinions on that. Uh, I'm going to be here. I, I do have to sneak out. I want to go uh, and attend a, a wake, um, and then I would, I'm hoping to maybe come back uh, shortly thereafter. Um, but I'm here to answer any questions to help. We have an outstanding community development department. Kurt Bellavance has worked very hard. But again, a lot of these projects are projects that have come to us that we're proposing just for discussion. Others we are supportive of uh, and, are, and are hopeful that there can be some movement on. But really, zoning, in my opinion, is something that we as a community need to look at continually to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our residents, the needs, the needs of our business, and to try to find a healthy balance for everybody. I think every community should be doing that, and this is our opportunity to do it on a number of areas of our city. Um, I do believe that we need housing, uh, but there's housing that is good. That there's some areas of the city where housing would be great, other areas of the city that I don't think housing would fit. Um, but certainly I think that's a discussion that we as, a, as, elected, as elected leaders, getting input from the community has to, that we have to make together. Uh, so again, looking forward to working with you on this, and I'm certainly here to answer any questions and work with our community development department and all of you. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate you being here. Um, just a reminder, this is being televised on channel, uh, on PBD Access TV. Um, we do not have, it is not a public meeting, so there is not a stenographer with us. Allison is sick, okay. So we're going to go to item one, the zoning map amendment, rezone parcels 136 and 137, as shown on assessor's map 86, numbered as 26 Holly Street from General Business District, GBD to Business Central, BC. Uh, Attorney Kelty, would you like to come up and tell us what you have in mind, please? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairman Gould and members of the City of PVD City Council. My name is John Kelty. I'm an attorney. I have offices at 40 Lowell Street here in PVD, Massachusetts. And I appear this evening on behalf of the uh, Flomp family, who are the owners of the property at uh, 26 Howley Street, uh, which is on the corner of Howley and, and uh, Walnut Street. Uh, and we seek this evening, we seek uh, the consideration of this subcommittee to uh, change our zoning from GBD to uh, Business Central. Currently, the uh, building has a church, and there could be one other small tenant uh, located in it. Uh, it has been um, losing tenants for a number of, uh, number of months, uh, even up to a year. And uh, my clients are currently down to uh, $5 a square foot uh, without the ability to uh, fill the premises. Um, so we're seeking the opportunity to have a zone change which would bring us to Business Central. Business Central affords us a few more, uh, a, a few more um, opportunities, but mostly it affords us the opportunity to uh, do housing. Uh, we could do housing in the Business Central Zoning District uh, by applying for a special permit from the City Council. Uh, and if the City Council saw fit, uh, to address that opportunity um, and to address that uh, special permit application. Uh, we have designed uh, some plans. We've engaged uh, Livermore Architects. Uh, we have engaged uh, Eastern Land Survey. We have 76 spaces. We have a plan that will show that there are 76 parking spaces on the site. There would be 32 bedroom apartments and 25 single bedroom apartments. Uh, within this building, we would add two stories to it. I have some representations of uh, what that building would look like. Uh, there's a preliminary, uh, preliminary. And motion to receive. 
So moved. What that rendering shows is uh, the opportunity that would be presented by um, this building where we would add uh, two stories on the top. Those are the uh, sections that, are, uh, that have some uh, other than uh, brick color. Uh, they're kind of blue and white. Uh, those would be two additional stories. That would give us this yield that I've just mentioned to you of uh, 31, 32 bedrooms and 25 one bedrooms. There would be um, residences on the first floor. There is a full basement. The full basement uh, would not be uh, utilized at all as residences, but we would have one, two, three, the existing three stories uh, without the basement, and then we would add the two uh, and try to go forward uh, with a special permit plan uh, with the city council. Um, there are... Um, some rumors that uh, this is a sick building. Uh, it's been air tested, air quality tested on a number of occasions when there was some activity taking place. Uh, we believe, we know that uh, we have passed all those tests. Uh, we've had uh, 21E um, uh, testing done when tanks were removed when the Flomp family first acquired the premises. Uh, those, that tank, those tanks are removed. We believe that we will, when we're uh, presenting uh, any potential, um, uh, any potential uh, project uh, to our banks, we will uh, have clean bill of health with respect to air quality, 21E, uh, and uh, the other issues that would be uh, presented at the time of financing. We uh, would also uh, be removing uh, additions to the premises so that such that uh, anything that is currently uh, extending over the brook, that would be gone. Uh, the other extension at the front of the property, which is on the Howley Street side, that would be removed. And we would end up with this uh, kind of uh, clean, neat industrial building that uh, would provide uh, some quality housing uh, here in the city, PVD downtown. So we're hopeful that uh, the City Council will at least give us the opportunity uh, to present a special permit plan by giving us the rezoning we've sought. The rezoning is an opportunity. The rezoning is, does give value, there's no doubt, because the uh, BC Zoning District does um, afford you the opportunity to do uh, several more things. And uh, we would uh, be grateful uh, to the City Council subcommittee uh, if they were to recommend uh, this zone change to the Committee of the Whole, and then we could go from this step to uh, finishing our plans such that uh, we could present a special permit plan to the City Council. I'm happy to, Mr. Stephen Lovely is here this evening. Um, he is uh, also counsel for the Flom family and uh, actually may be a principal in uh, a future development. We're happy to answer any questions that the Council may have. Councilors. Councilor Matsoulis, you are not a member of the committee, but since nobody else has offered to speak at this point. So well, if <clears throat> nobody wants to talk, I guess I will. Um, <clears throat> I don't like doing this, but uh, it, it seems to be something I... Uh, I'm in a habit of doing now because most of you councillors I just really met and you were not on the council years ago and I like to give the history of how we got here so you'll have a better understanding of why I vote the way I do and why I think the way I do. Uh, back in the early days in this council that whole area Walnut Street up to Webster Street was all zoned light industry. 
the tanneries were there at the time. That's where everybody worked. The tanneries went out of business, and then all we had there were empty buildings. And just to give you an idea of uh, what the buildings look like, Councillor Turco would know because in his ward on Kerwin, on Kerwin Street, there is an old, there's an old brick abandoned building with all the windows broken, and that's exactly what uh, on Holly Street we had the old Flint Inn down there, Janeco and Grill, we had Friend Lumber, we had a bunch of businesses down there. And on Webster Street, you had a seven-story building that was exactly the same. The windows were all broken. Now, I'm just giving you, and the businesses were, uh, were gone. I'm just uh, telling you uh, what happened after that. A company came in with some very powerful people and money behind them. And what they wanted to do was make a zoning change. And what they said was, that nothing will ever come here. Businesses are gone, and uh, they had all the money and the power to change uh, the whole character of the neighborhood. Now, at that time, Salem got involved because Salem uh, was abutting that property. And they came in with an application to put multi-dwelling housing units, hundreds of them, Right where, Webs right where the stop and shop is right now. Uh, we fought this issue for four years. We went out between Salem and Peabody. We hired an attorney, and every time there was an approval made for this project, it would go to court and it was stalled off for four years. And this went on until the developer said, I've had enough, he backed out of it. As soon as he backed out of it, let me tell you what happened. Stop and Shop came in there. Um, and uh, next door to Stop and Shop, the, uh, uh, the Portuguese people bought the, their club and they put the, I um, can't think of the name of it, the Holy Ghost, right. They put the Holy Ghost in there. Um, and all of a sudden, the businesses started coming back, okay? Walnut Street now, you can't find many empty spaces down there. You go to Webster Street, all seven stories are full. And Webster Street is employing people. That whole industrial park over there is employing people. And uh, the reason I'm giving you the history of this is because I see what is going to happen if we do make this zoning change. We fought that issue in 1997. I got off the council. I got replaced by someone else in 1998, the following year. They made the zoning change, okay? Obviously against the people that were living there because they weren't happy about it because that's why they voted me back in office, okay? Let me tell you what happened. Um, on 8 Walnut Street, when they made the zoning change, they put eight, 80 units there. That's right across the street from Dunkin' Donuts. If you go down the street at number 75, they put 50-some-odd uh, units there. And then you go over to uh, Abon Street, they put another 75 units there. And right aside of the Holy Ghost, they approved 400 townhouses that have not been built yet, but the approval is there, and I see this as becoming a lawsuit at some point. Um, so then, uh, a few years went by, I got elected again, okay? Now, <clears throat> my neighborhood does not want housing there. Housing does not belong there. It will change the whole character of the neighborhood. What I said back then was if you allowed this zoning change, you would have 6,000 units that look like this, okay? Down, on, down just Walnut Street alone, never mind Webster Street, 
because that's another issue also that we had uh, a building the same as the one that I, I had told you about. That building today is full to capacity. There's businesses there and that is what our city, that's how our city, our neighborhood was zoned. It supports business businesses. The people that live in the neighborhood work there. They walk to work. Uh, it's not intrusive in any way at all. Um, the traffic has gotten bad throughout the city. I think we all know that. And if I'm looking for a reason to deny this, I would say traffic would be one of your biggest reasons. But uh, uh, I, I am going to... I'm just giving you a little history on this so you'll know where I'm coming from. And the people that uh, I could fill this room tomorrow if I wanted to. I've got letters uh, that I'd like you. I'd like, I have two letters here in opposition to Motion this, to Mr. Receive. Chairman. Motion to receive. Um, <clears throat> I've got a little more to add, but I'm just going to wait to hear what everyone else says. Um, so moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Matsoulis. Would anyone like to add anything? Councilor Sharis, please. Thank you, Chairman. I, I just want to be very clear and understanding. Councilor Matsoulis, you are not for this proposal. Am I clear? Absolutely not. Thank you. Councilor Rosignol, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll, I'll be um, brief. My fear with a building A of this magnitude is a little bit daunting, but regardless of that, one thing I, I mentioned when we were talking about Walnut Street is I, I don't feel it's appropriate to put residents in a flood zone, and this is exactly what this would be. So I, I, I'm going to be perfectly frank. I, I, I want to stay consistent with my beliefs, and I don't think that this is an appropriate place for a um, building like this. So um, that's my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Rosignol. Councilor McGinn, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would just reiterate the point made by Councilor Rosignol. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about this quite a bit with respect to other uh, unrelated applications, but this, this, this building is uh, either in the FEMA AE flood zone or in the FEMA AE regulatory floodway actually over the river. So I, I'm, I appreciate the fact that uh, Attorney Kelty said that that portion of the building that's actually over the river would be removed. But um, that 100% uh, of the remaining building is in the, the AE flood zone. And we've, we've recently just gone over all the aspects of zoning that, that specifically say that residential uses should not be established. Uh, in those areas. Um, so, you know, we know that based on historic information, the probability of this area flooding is, is high, given the impact of, of what's anticipated to come and everything that we reviewed uh, back in September when we talked about the Municipal Vulnerability Program uh, and as it relates to climate change, we know that the, the impact of the, uh, the information that's been provided to us from the state in in the decades, in not too many, <laughs> in the next uh, three to four decades, is one and a half to four feet. Uh, the, a range of sea level rise in the in the area, one and a half to four feet. That's an intense amount of additional water pushing back into Peabody, coupled with uh, what we know is already happening with more frequent and intense storms. It is it, it precisely the wrong time to be considering any any uh, residential developments in a flood zone. Uh, so I, I can't in, in good conscience support anything that would ultimately result in people living uh, in an area that has an extremely high potential of flooding and, and I just think that would be uh, extremely poor planning. Um, I, flooding, it, it can absolutely have negative impacts on commercial uses but those those really tend to be minor as compared to the impact on residents. Uh, you know, business can close down and do the necessary cleanup. There is absolutely uh, a negative financial impact on them and so forth, but, but the impact, impact on residents is so much greater. They, they need to be evacuated. We need to deal with the uh, more uh, 
health risks associated with things like contamination and mold. Um, these, we would essentially be agreeing to put residents in an area that's going to put them at, at, uh, at risk and put strain on emergency uh, response. So uh, for all those reasons, I, I can't support uh, this uh, request to rezone these parcels. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor McGinn. Councilor Gravel, then Councilor Sasslaw, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I'm not on the committee, so uh, I don't really have a, a, a vote on any of this except when it gets back to the council. But uh, I am curious to listen to the people that we hire as experts um, in terms of what their opinion is on the project. So I, I'd ask uh, Crip Pelavance in terms of you know what his thinking is and about the uh, project and if he could come up and talk to us about that. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Councillor Gravel. Mr. Bellavance, would you come up and feel free to shed some light on it, please? Um, I missed the question. I couldn't hear you over there. Sorry, I'm having a little difficulty speaking up tonight. <coughs> it's been quite a day. But uh, my, my question was, you know, we all deal with zoning from one perspective, us on the council. Had some great experiences, but uh, you know, there's always a reason why zones are put in. So I wanted your perspective on uh, what this project would mean to Peabody, and, and uh, whether or not it's something that you're looking to drive home to support. Well, uh, thank you uh, for asking me up here. Um, I think the Everybody's pretty familiar uh, with me now. Um, I've been supportive of housing uh, in general, uh, and specifically in certain areas uh, throughout the city. Um, one area uh, that I'm supportive of is, is the downtown area. Um, and that my concern is uh, in, in regards to housing is basically bringing um, more disposable income to downtown so that we have people living, spending their money, keeping that uh, in Peabody. Uh, one of the reports we had received from uh, one of the studies we had uh, received grant money from Mass Development uh, basically uh, showed that uh, there was a certain percentage of money leaving Peabody uh, because it wasn't staying in Peabody. Um, and they weren't, we weren't seeing people uh, driving to come to Peabody like they would be to like a mall or some area like that. And that, the, that there was a need for more housing generally in, in downtown to support the businesses on Main Street. So our office has been working, and it started before I even arrived here in Peabody, uh, with trying to um, incorporate more housing uh, in downtown, um, all, all levels of housing. Um, so in general, um, and I believe that was, um, it's supportive of, of Main Street um, as part of their uh, ideas of bringing people more uh, downtown. Uh, with getting more people having businesses open and so forth. It's a, it's a cyclical thing where you, you bring more people, more businesses open, more people come, more businesses open and so forth. And that's what we're trying to, um, we're trying to create a sustainable downtown. And part of that involves um, bringing housing uh, downtown. Um, I'm supportive of, of putting housing here. I know the question of uh, the floodplain is something that we definitely have to uh, take a look at and, and consider. Um, but overall, I'm sure in the future, uh, we'll be looking at more projects downtown and coming before the city council in regards to those as well. And we'll, we'll cross that bridge uh, when we get to it uh, in the future. Uh, hope that answered your question. It, it, it did. So, it, it, you know, it's what I kind of expected. It was it's a very pragmatic approach to we got a problem. We're trying to address a problem. Um, we've got an area. It's limited. Um, we can't change what is. And I, I, I couldn't agree more with uh, Council McGinn on you know, well, Councilor Rosignol on, you know, flooding. I, I, I think, you know, our perspective on that at some point in time is going to have to change to what we can do to mitigate the problem, what we can do to prevent the problem, retainage, release, a lot of things of that nature. And, uh, and, uh, and as far as the buildings go, uh, you know, I'm, I'm only a few years different from you, so I've been in that area for a long time um, and been in the Ward 2 for a long time, grew up there. Um, 
I, I'm sure there was a lot of heart wrenching thought that went on with a lot of the factory buildings as they were being converted, whether it be uh, Burza, whether it be Remus's place, whether it be uh, where the Tannery Twos are now. I remember there was a, you know, a discussion back in the day on where our current um, common is because Saroy was there. Um, so I, I mean. They all have to be addressed. I, I don't think that we can continuously think that what is will always be. Uh, my feeling is we have to start thinking about what do we want it to be. Um, so I, 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 I just have one more question to you, Kurt, um, because this, this is what concerns me most. You know, if, if there's a zoning change and it's done by special permit, the council has every right in the world to deny a special permit for a residential. Uh, if there's no zoning change, uh, and uh, the petitioner files for a 40B development there. Uh, what, what's the impact on the city if they do that? I, I can't really say what the impact would be. Usually they, they, they'll try to do more units uh, because uh, if you're going to subsidize a, a portion of those units, you, you tend to have more units to pay and offset those subsidies for those units. Um, it's, I mean, that's a, the con conundrum we're in now where... Uh, you know, we're trying to support businesses and get them up and running. If they don't, if they're not successful, the, the alternative is, well, there's a housing developer down the street waiting to develop my property. And so um, you'll see other things later on tonight. It's more commercial related um, as opposed to residential related. But um, part of it is the special permit process is nice because it puts the control in the, in the hands of the, of the city council. And you talk about uh, design features, uh, building materials and things like that that you want to see versus a comprehensive permit where you, do, you don't really have a say because they're, they're trying to promote the fact that we don't want to spend money because it costs us to, uh, pro to create affordable housing versus a special permit and have market rate housing where the more they charge and create a, a better product, they're just going to make that up in the rents that they charge. So that's probably the biggest difference. Would, would there be, uh, and again, not, not being as familiar with 40B as you as an expert, would it be that... Um, Ultimately, uh, because the zone is not zoned, it's currently uh, light industrial, um, or G I guess this one's GBD. I think it's GBD. GBD. Yep. Uh, and, and it's not allowed by right or special permit for a residential. Does, does 40B um, in an application supersede the zonings to, to the effect that they could go and get uh, what they want for um, and put residential units in there? regardless of whether or not we, we have zoning restriction? No. The comprehensive permit, which goes before the Board of Appeals, is basically a, they're looking for waivers from the zoning ordinance. So that's why they would go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, which is a typical variance situation. Typically, the biggest um, variance you'll look at is, is use. So the City of Peabody doesn't allow use variances, so they would have to go a comprehensive permit route and basically ask to promote or allow a use that doesn't normally go in that area to go in that area. Thank you, Mr. Belvance. Thank you, Councillor Gravel. Councillor Saslaw, please. Thank you. Um, so I, I echo the sentiments of Councillors Rosignol and Council McGinn. Um, and I've also listened closely to the Ward 3 Council since I've been on the Council. I've listened to those history lessons and I know the fight that you had 20 years ago, you've explained it to me both on the floor and privately, and you know your ward. And, um, you know, I understand, I hear that. The one thing that doesn't jive for me 100% is, is when you've been talking about all the buildings that are full, and for some reason this building isn't full, and it doesn't make sense to me, but it's not enough to, to, to uh, make me look at um, putting housing there. Maybe this building needs to be, uh, laid out differently for, uh, for commercial use. But um, in a nutshell, I'm going to support uh, the councilor in Wood 3, and, and I do not feel comfortable uh, changing the zoning to allow housing in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Saslaw. Any other councilors? Uh, our esteemed clerk has reminded, has told me that in accordance with Massachusetts, Massachusetts General Law 40A, um, we are required to refer this to the February 14th scheduled public hearing. 
So we will take a vote to. Yeah, could I have a motion from someone in the committee, please? Councilman again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd, I would move uh, for a negative recommendation uh, for the zoning map amendment to rezone parcels 136 and 137 as shown on the assessor's map 86, numbered as 26 Harley Street from General Business District, District GBD to Business Central BC. Uh, on the motion, that would be a negative recommendation to the full council at the uh, for the public hearing that is uh, scheduled for what's the date February 14th. February 14th so in a yes vote is to to support a negative recommendation to support a negative recommendation you heard the motion by Councillor McGinn roll call please <laughs> Councillors McGinn yes Rosignol yes Sasla Yes. Charest. Yes. Gould. Yes. Motion carries five to nothing. Attorney Kelty, we'll see you on the 14th. Thank you. Next on the agenda is a procedural motion by Councillor Charest, please. Thank you, Council Chairman. Uh, this is the uh, item B on our agenda, correct, Councillor? Yes. I'm, I'm going to ask for this to stay in committee for us allowed to have a neighborhood meeting uh, to be established by the mayor because I am requesting the uh, fire department, police department, um, community development and the building commissioner all to be able to be present at the neighborhood meeting. And this neighborhood meeting is to discuss the plans from the petitioner who's well, we're, the, we're actually, the city is looking to change the zoning, but because of a, uh, a proposed use um, to be addressed the issues of some of the neighbors. Now, we do know that this property is looking to be a 55 and older owner-occupied condominiums. Um, what we don't have in front of us yet is the number of units humming um, with the parking spots and the, the more detail. Uh, we had one meeting early on in the year, probably uh, eight, nine months ago, and a lot of the questions that was asked then are still the same questions. And we really couldn't have a meeting until then because we, we still don't have the, uh, I don't want to say a, a final, but a proposal, a proper proposal from the, um, the owners. So with that being said and what the mayor had said earlier, I have asked for this to stay in committee so we can have a neighborhood meeting with the, the department heads and the city there present. And then from that point, look at it again in this committee to move forward. I believe what has been proposed of lack of formal proposal is the best use of this property. It's a 55 and older owner-occupied piece of property. Uh, we know that in, within the city, there is a need for this type of housing. We hear it all the time that we don't have a, enough of a, a senior living uh, facilities. Um, now, this isn't going to be affordable housing, so I'm not trying to stretch it. I'm just saying this is an option for our residents here in Peabody who's reached out to me numerous ones who say they want to stay in Peabody but they want to downsize. They don't want their three, four bedroom homes. They want a one bedroom. They may be recently widowed, so they're looking to stay within the city. So I think this is a, a good proposal. And again, I'm just waiting for the, the uh, proper uh, format come in with the, um, the petitioner to build. So um, I like, I'm asking the mayor's office in this, in this community here, this subcommittee and the council as a whole to be present at a neighborhood meeting so we can get more information from the um, owners of this property. So we'll move. Thank you, Councilor Sharris. You heard Councilor Sharris's motion in regards to keeping this in committee while we set up a neighborhood meeting, neighborhood informative meeting. 
So move. Roll call vote, please. Councilors McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Saslaw. Yes. Charis. Yes. School. Yes. Motion carries five to nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Next, item C, zoning amendments, residential overlay. Mr. Bellavance, please. Mr. Bellavance, if I could have, ask you, please, uh, I know the pages aren't numbered, but as you go through this, can you please refer to um, what pages, because there's a lot of different language in here. If you could be specific for us, please. Thank you. I will. I will try my best. Um, uh, thank you, uh, uh, members of the uh, subcommittee and other members of the city council. Um, what the uh, residential overlay uh, that's before you this evening um, is about uh, basically identifying property where we believe housing development should go within the city. We've talked a few times in the past about uh, some of the areas that shouldn't go. Uh, we're hoping that these are the areas that uh, we believe the property should go. Um, currently, uh, it's, it's 2019, and we're completing uh, the year decade census uh, next year in 2020. So we're looking at a, um, a possible new number for our subsidized housing inventory. Currently, we're at 9.3%, and we suspect that would uh, drop down uh, roughly to about 8% um, if we get the 2020 census. So uh, we would still be uh, susceptible to uh, comprehensive permits of 40 Bs, uh, which I explained a little bit earlier that um, they can uh, usurp zoning and go uh, where they feel they need to go. Uh, so part of this, uh, this residential overlay is to identify property we feel could be developed in a residential manner uh, and then uh, include the inclusionary zoning so that we would match uh, affordable housing units. So we would continue to be uh, building on that count. Uh, the zoning um, in, the, in the two areas uh, that we worked on putting together are uh, generally Route 1 and generally over near the mall uh, area. I've included uh, some maps along with, the, uh, with this proposal to demonstrate those areas. Um, many of the people feel uh, that the reason for this, or believe the reason I believe is for the uh, absorption of traffic. That seems to be one of the major concerns. And the interchange where the North Shore Mall is located and Route 1 uh, is in better condition to handle traffic or any additional traffic than, say, it would Bartholomew Street, County Street, Lowell Street, and so forth. Um, the, the issue with traffic is not a Peabody issue. Uh, it's not a New England issue. It's a national issue. Um, Probably in the last 30 years, we've built a minimal amount of new roadways. Uh, the uh, state and federal government has uh, basically put their dollars on repair. So you've had bridge repair, road repair, uh, and so forth, and hasn't spent any money really on uh, creating new uh, traffic uh, patterns or roadways for our people. And in that same period, we've probably tripled the amount of cars on the road and drivers on the road. So the issue isn't just a Peabody issue. It's it's a national, it's a national issue. So when I say Route 1 and 114 can, are in better condition to handle those, that type of traffic, as I am, I pointed out, it's better than roads like Bartholomew, County, Lowell Street, and those sorts. So those are the, uh, one of the main reasons we look at trying to locate residential or larger residential projects in, the, in those particular areas. Um, but now let me go into the um, uh, brief overview of the particular zoning uh, residential overlay that we're proposing. The highlights of that, and uh, you have it with you as part of your packets, um, include uh, creating a district that would allow both uh, commercial and residential. Uh, as you're, you're familiar with Route 1 and, and then the mall area, those are uh, mostly uh, commercial. There are some residential along Route 1, and there is some residential uh, over near the mall but this would be allow those uh, two to coexist. Um, this language also maximizes the number of bedrooms uh, at two per unit. Uh, we tend to see the higher number of bedroom units uh, tends to attract uh, more kids. And I know that tends to be uh, an issue in regards to school and controlling the population that goes through the school department. Um, 
It also requires a, uh, an assessment of uh, a capital assessment, which would look at uh, uh, the cost of the impact this project would have on the city. Uh, so they would be subject to a review of that, and that in regards to um, water, sewer, uh, those particular uh, issues that, um, that cost money to, uh, to create, and we're going through that process now. Um, it also outlines design criteria. As I mentioned a, a little while ago, um, right now there's no, there's no mechanism in place to, uh, to um, prevent vinyl siding versus cement plank, brick, that type of thing. And what we're looking to try to do is create um, better market rate projects that are more attractive, they're made with better building materials, they're meant to last, they're meant to look uh, a lot better. Um, so the whole point behind that was having more des design control through the special permit, uh, which is through the city council. Um, and then it also adds the uh, compliance with the inclusionary zoning, so that we are making sure that we meet our affordable, uh, affordability uh, requirements in regards to that. Um, I've attached uh, the maps uh, that are in your, part, your packet. Um, I've, I've described them just as, as a numerical, um, with the, uh, the first one, and I do have a list if you want a specific address or not. I do have addresses to the parcels. Uh, basically, it is the uh, mall uh, property, which would be on the first sheet uh, from Essex. I can't read it myself. Essex Center Drive uh, north towards the, uh, the entire mall site and some of that area um, as part of that one uh, particular parcel. And uh, then, uh, Mr. Bellavance, can you hold up what you think is uh, what you are speaking to? Is that the same? Yes, this is a sheet. So everyone will be able, so we'll all be on the same page? Correct. Okay, so it's the highlighted North Shore Mall with a big... It's the property that would be north of where Shaw's is, so that would be included all the way to 114 uh, with a container store. So that gives you a better idea of, of the mall property. It also uh, has a, uh, a dog left on the other cross street, uh, which includes the uh, property I believe they may have been before you where Alto Forno was. They came back, they were looking a few years ago about doing some residential. And then also the uh, former MRI uh, building. So it included those parcels as well as part of that mall, that mall area. The, the other area uh, on Route 1, so that's the 114 area, is basically uh, the surrounding at the mall and the piece next to the mall. Uh, the area on Route 1, there's uh, two areas, Route 1 North, and two areas in Route 1 South. The two areas on Route 1 North are identified as the, um, the area that was also zoned uh, for uh, medical marijuana, those parcels, and then the parcels where the Spring Hill Suites is as well. So I'll hold that map up here if you want to take a look at what I'm referencing. So, Mr. Belvance, that is items one, two, three, and four as you on the Correct. left. Correct. This, on the this left sheet column. showing one and two, yes, that's, okay. that's the parcels traveling north okay. on Route 1. And then on the following page, it's, it's the ones identified as three and four. Those are on southbound uh, Route 1. The Mr. Belvance, can I ask a, a yeah, favor, definitely. please? For those that are watching at home that don't know what the language of overlay means can you please because we need to be transparent about what we're yeah, talking definitely. about so the in in very basic terms too. right thank you so we're basically uh creating a floating zoning district uh which is uh basically identified uh, multifamily residential as a special permit process through the city council we created this district which had which has um uh criteria that someone would have to meet in order to uh, apply and receive a special permit through the city council. So it's additional requirements because it is a, it's a, it's a special zoning district, to, to, for lack of a better word. So you're, we're applying additional restrictions to someone coming forward. Where there's not residential allowed at this time. That is correct. Okay. So this would be for, and we're picking out or showing properties that this would apply that, like you said, uh, Councillor, that residential is not currently allowed, correct. 
So there are, I, I believe the first time I came to the city council, uh, I, had, I had talked to them about uh, changing business uh, regional and business regional one to allow this. That was basically all of Route 1 and all of 114. I, I heard the council say that was, that was too much. Uh, uh, we, they didn't, you, you didn't want to see that. That was, uh, that was a little uh, too much property to rezone. So I proposed these, uh, a handful of locations uh, for the city council. Um, it's up to the city council whether, they, whether you feel you want to go with all of those, none of those, or somewhere in between that you would feel comfortable with those particular parcels. Um, but I wanted to at least present options uh, to the city council uh, if you so choose to, uh, to move forward on this special permit uh, process with a residential overlay. I'm happy to answer some more questions. Thank you, Mr. Bellavance. Anybody? Councilor Sharis, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, if we can go to um, the overlay on 114 Mall area, Mr. Bellavance. The, um, this, I have some major concerns with um, in that large section of the mall, the, it looks like it would be next to uh, the Leahy Clinic, those parcels there to be uh, included. Um, I don't have a, a problem with up on um, so much on, on off of um, Prospect. There's a two, um, that little piece that kind of sticks out. Um, those pieces there, they're much smaller of um, plots. The one to the, to the top left, that building there, what, can you identify that building for me? What it is? That's the, is the former MRI building? Is that the one, it's off of Prospect? Okay, right. Um, questions about that, and, but I will have some major concerns with um, that bottom right hand, uh, excuse me, bottom left hand corner of the mall area there uh, to be. So I would like to, you know, pull those out. Uh, again, I, I have no problem with up on um, those couple pieces on Prospect where there's a smaller, smaller bu uh, buildings, plots. Um, again, that's my thoughts and my concerns with that. I'd, li I'd like to hear what the, the rest of the committee has to say, but I, I certainly wouldn't be in favor for those larger portions. Councilor Sharris. Yeah, I, do, yep. I do appreciate your work. Thank you. Yeah, it, there was, yeah, there was, it, it's, there's a funny lines along with, with that uh, southern part of the mall area where we have the Leahy Clinic, and it's very doubtful anything uh, would happen with that. Um, it was more to leave flexibility uh, with the North Shore Mall and how they would arrange uh, certain properties. I would imagine uh, an investment on this property would be in the tens of millions of dollars, so they may end up taking a building down and moving a building and, and putting a different layout. So that was the only reason I had kind of incorporated the whole area, but I think I ex expected it to be closer towards the mall than, than say, the Lady Clinic. So I'm, I'm agreeing with what you're saying, basically. Councilor Sharris, if, if you could be specific with us on the map, the main body of the mall is here. You're talking down in here? Yeah, well, those, I'm, ex I'm assuming the block, the dock and block parcels is what you're, you're speaking about, right? So anything of the west, south of that? I'm looking at a, yeah, this property's here. Yes. I'm, I'm concerned with the size of those units of that property about making it residential and commercial because, I mean, how many, how many units would possibly go in there and you really only have really two ways in, into that property? Thank you. We're, I, I'm glad you clarified that for us. Thank you. Councilor Rosignol, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Uh, through you to Mr. Bellavance. Um, regarding this property, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll stick with, with the, the mall for the moment. Uh, just reading through our, our ordinances, would this be more appropriate for a BC type of zoning? I remember Councillor Gravel, when this was first brought up as a re residential overlay, and I thought he raised a great point. Your 20-somethings, they want to be able to live and work and kind of establish their residency where they can kind of have a nightlife and have a residence all in the same place. So I, I was certainly in favor of something like that in this general area. My, my only fear is the size and scope of any residential um, entity. And by changing it to a BC versus just residential, would that limit the size and scope of um, a residential property? Well, the key, the key to the, the overlay is it allows you to keep the commercial on the property. So it, it's meant to be a mix of commercial and residential. And the other key is that it's all the design requirements and everything are their requirements. And they would, it's a special permit that would have to come to the city council, which you would then, again, determine what you like, what you don't like. And the other thing is that we also limited the number of uh, bedrooms to only two per so that you don't want to see a three bedroom type of uh, development as well, which would be bigger. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Because the other thing that I would like to see in this type of facility is like an owner occupied condos, townhouses versus high rises, you know, looking at Linfield's model and what they have established over um, on Walnut Street, they have a great layout with um, condos and townhouses. But I think their high rise is just a little bit too much and adds a, a great deal of congestion down there. So I, I just, I'm glad that if this ends up going forward and passes, that it will still have to come to the council for special permit regarding any use that's going to go there. So I appreciate your feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Rosenthal. Any other councilors? Councilor Manning Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to Mr. Bellavance. Um, in the area that Councilor Charest was talking about even further down to the left. There were, I went on the assessor's map and I clicked those parcels and I was very curious what they are and why they're included. To me, they looked like individual private units. The, the assessor's map had them land values of uh, 164,000, 104,000, 220,000. And then it has individual people's names. I'm not going to mention them. But the best I can make out is it looks like they're individual units. Um, so I didn't know why they were included in there. It seems very odd that they would have been lumped in there. Are you aware of what they are? And did you plan to have them lumped in? Thank you, Councillor Manning Martin. Councillor Rosignol, you raise your hand. Do you have something to shed on that? I think, for point of clarification, Essex Green is right past that. I, I think when you looked at the assessor's map, you went down one parcel too far. Because I know Essex Green is, is the residential units all around the island. And if I may, through you, Mr. Chairman, to Councillor Rosignol, um, I clicked the, above that line. It does come up as Essex Green and a unit number. But it is above, it's, it's strange, it is above the line. Um, and so I think you should just check that out. I, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure you want to include them in there. So if you could just check that out. Right, and, and I, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. And the, um, the I had, as I, when I came up here originally, I said it's the, it's the Essex Center Drive, which is north of the post office. So as I, from the original time that I had passed this along back in the fall to the city council, I thought better of moving that line a little bit closer to where the uh, former Toys R Us and Shaw's are. So that's, those are not included. They are their business condos. So that's why the... Um, but they, they are included on this map that you just gave correct, us. Correct. Correct. Okay. So maybe when we move forward, we could have a cleaner map yes, and maybe yes, have definitely. it in a PowerPoint mm -hmm. um, so that folks at home can follow yeah. along that w what map we're, and what parcels and things that we're talking about would probably be helpful at the next meeting. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I may um, Yes, please. Question. You have the floor. 
Thank you. Um, and in your, uh, the language for the overlay language that, you know, the 6.13.4, yaddy yaddy, um, you mentioned uh, 6.13.4.1, the following uses shall be permitted by right uh, in the, well, this is the mill overlay district, but um, personal service establishment. I didn't find that in our table of uses. So if you could tell me what that is and are we going to put it in our table of uses? That's not included in the residential overlay, but you're correct. It is with the mill. Okay, overlay. I jumped. Okay, yeah. so I'll hold that question for the mill. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Manning Martin. Councilor Saslaw, please. Thank you. Um, so uh, I'll touch briefly on the uh, 114 proposal. Um, I think everything that my Council brought up, I, I agree with as far as some of the properties that shouldn't be in there. And, uh, and I also, um, I like the fact that, you know, every article you read talks about um, what's going to happen with brick and mortar stores. And I think by putting the residential overlay on these properties, uh, on this property, the North Shore Shopping Center and some abutting properties, it is a forward thinking because at some point in time, um, you know, I think it was just announced, uh, I think we got a, we all got a uh, email about uh, from uh, resident Russ Donovan about uh, J.C. Penney going out of business. And so I think we have to forward think and we have to partner because as we all know, that's our biggest tax base, that's our biggest tax partner. So I, I, I think uh, what we're doing here tonight, taking the time to look at this and really assess it is, is, is a proper thing to do. Um, I did have a couple of quick questions. You mentioned that. And I don't know if you know these numbers, but you mentioned that with the census coming up, we're at 9.3, and you expect the new census, we're going to only be at 8% on affordable housing. Can you quantify that in a, in a hard number within, uh, not a hard number, but you know, we're talking 100, we're 150 now, and we're going to go up to, I don't know if you, if you quantified that at all. We're always trying to hit it. That's why I'm trying to ask you if I, we're always trying to hit it. No, I mean, it was a, it was a back of an envelope uh, uh, guesstimate of that. Um, typically, when the, the census comes out, unless you're at about 12 percent, you're going to drop below uh, 10 percent. Um, we have about uh, 2,200, uh, 2,100 affordable units out of 22,000. So we're at that 9, 9 percent. Um, with the projects coming on um, over the last decade, They'll incorporate all, all of those into year-round residential, so I'm guessing that'll be at least another uh, 2,000 units counted. But it's something that I can get for you and, and basically pull out numbers. It's, it's a little bit of work of going through the last decade and trying to determine all the housing units. Um, but that's something we definitely want to do and get prepared for. If you could, that'd be great, because the 9.3, we're close. We're going to go back to 8%. I'm just curious how much we're losing, per se, how much we're going to be back back behind the eight ball again. Um, I'd like to touch a little bit upon um, the Route 1 maps that are, pro that are provided. Um, when I looked at uh, the four parcels of land, I, I noticed there were some changes. You took a few out that I was happy to see that were out. Um, as far as the parcels number one and parcels number two, uh, it's more than one. You, you've given us the addresses. So when I say parcel one, I believe that's three pieces of land. Parcel, excuse me, parcel one, I believe, is four pieces of land. And parcel one, parcel two is three. Um, I, I just didn't think that it was appropriate. I mean, we had designated, there were four parcels in number one, and we had designated that as the uh, medical marijuana uh, zoning. There are only four parcels of land, so I I, I don't understand. I, I like to just see that come out, quite frankly, because that really hasn't played itself out. There are two special permits floating out there, and and right now I I just um, don't see that as appropriate for housing. There are actually basically businesses that are up and running there, and the majority of them. And then if you go under uh, Route One, um, past 
uh, Dawn's Power. You go right underneath where I think Spring Hill Suites is and the strip mall with the restaurant and a lot of uh, interior design type businesses. You've also included that parcel of parcels. Um, I, I'd like to see that taken out. I, I don't think that, um, once again, I believe there's one parcel that's undeveloped. It really sits right on Route 1. Actually, um, it abuts the, uh, the overpass right there. Um, so I would request that, um, that those be taken out. I don't think that um, they're appropriate places to put um, housing. No, are they even really probably large enough? Regarding the southbound parcels, um, I'm comfortable with both of those. Um, one of the things that I, I have listened a lot to my councils over the past year um, is we do talk about the difference between apartments and condominiums. And I do feel, um, whether it be special permits that come before us based upon what we approve, I do understand that the shopping center, um, if you look at the other developments in the area, Avalon to Hilltop, Linfield Marketplace, there's mixes. There, there are, I believe it actually Linfield Marketplace, there are actually uh, condos and there are apartments. And I think when you uh, are next to a retail facility, I'm a, I'm a little bit more open to apartments. But when I see the stuff on Route 1, I, I, I lean towards condos. And the reason I do that is, 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 is basically, I like to see the residents, uh, whoever has that property, have skin in the game. A lot of times apartments sometimes can, um, over time, depending on who owns it, the investment they're going to make. And I think that you've put a lot of conditions, but I still think that when someone owns uh, a piece of property, uh, as I said, they have more skin in the game, they're going to upkeep, they're going to make sure that uh, everyone's very conscientious about what goes on in the area. Um, and I know that um, those two parcels, once again, they're not um, that large where I don't see us even getting into probably triple digits as far as condos or apartments, very probably under that by a significant amount. Um, so I, I'm comfortable with that. I'll, I'll also state for the record, I am aware that um, one of the parcels, I believe, has mobile home housing on it currently. And what I'm comfortable with that is that nothing can be done until those, those people are taken care of. And that's of utmost importance. And I want to let them know that uh, I'm aware of that and that it's not a situation uh, where we rezone something and they're going to have to leave. That's going to have to be, uh, if someone chooses to want to um, invest in that property, buy that property, whatever, convert it, that those residences have to be taken care of properly. So once again, another reason why I'm comfortable uh, with uh, you have it designated as parcel number three. Um, and, and, I, and I'll just close with this. I, I understand that traffic is not a Peabody problem, it's a national problem, and you know, houses in the old days had one, two cars. Now, if you have um, a family of four, it's very, very common to have four cars. But that being said, I, I still feel, um, and I hear it loud and clear from my constituents, I'm sure my other councils do, that we still have to be aware of that. We have to take that into account. And so I'm, I'm concerned about gridlock and where we put these, um, where we put these additional uh, housing units. So um, for me, uh, I do recognize, as you said, it is a national problem, but you know, all I can do is impact my city. And as I look at these projects that come before us, I will look at what type of stress and what type of uh, traffic situations uh, it can cause. But, um, so I, 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 when we come up to a motion, as like I said, I would like to request that one and two be removed from the Route 1 proposal overlay that on the map that you pr presented us with. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, on that, items one and two, parcels one and two, would you like to address that, Mr. Bellavance, or are you in agreement with Councillor Saslaw that it probably doesn't work there? Right. I wanted to provide an option to, to the Council. I, as I said before, I originally came back with everything on Route 1 and, and heard you loud and clear that that's not going to work. Uh, so I, I tried to look at some vacant parcels or par parcels that could be developed along Route 1 and thought those were the best ones to start with and then figured that the, at, this, at this hearing that people would decide on which ones were, were better or more appropriate. So Because it's, it's very involved procedurally, um, is there any discussion that would like to take place just in regards to Apostles 1 and 2 before? I know Councilor Turco and Councilor Rosignol. In regards to Apostles 1 and 2, 
Councilman again? Or excuse me. Yeah. Councilor so Turco, was you at? No. Councilor Rosignol, were you in? All right. Councilor McGinn, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, with respect to, uh, I mean, I agree with Councilor Sasslar on, on parcels uh, one and two. We, we have an overlay district for medical marijuana there, so we, we would essentially putting, be putting an overlay on an overlay, and, and, then the, and then you've got the underlying zoning to deal with. So God help us if we have to sort all, all that out if any proposal ever comes before us in terms of how all those, those three layers would, would interact. I, I, that is some, that's a place I just don't think we want to go. So I, I would, uh, I, I think uh, Councilor Sasslaw said it in a different way, but uh, I, I would totally agree with him on that. And, I would, and looking at that other uh, site, I also agree it's, it's three quarters developed or two or two-thirds developed already um, so that one doesn't make a tremendous amount of sense to me uh, either I, I mean I, I would also have concerns major concerns with on parcel four um, I mean that is the reason that's not developed now is it's it's almost entirely a DEP wetland so I, I, I would not be uh, supportive of including that parcel I've, I've, I'd be much more supportive of the uh, of the parcels that were discussed uh, in the vicinity of the mall I think there's um, I think that makes a lot of sense I I, uh, uh, I agreed with that early on I agreed with that with uh, when we had this discussion uh, several months ago that that that's an area that's probably more pri more ripe for this this type of an overlay uh, than what I'm seeing on the on the route one uh, sections that were offered up here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor McGinn. Councilor Turco, please. No, I'm sorry. Councilor Rosignol, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, procedurally, so, I mean, we're talking about each individual parcels, but I, I think the, if we backtrack a little bit, I think the first thing we have to do as a, as a subcommittee, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Chairman, is are we in favor of, of a residential overlay district? To, to me, that's the first question. Are we in favor of this? Not taking into account where, because obviously we have different points of view of where that is. But I, I think, at least from what I'm hearing from the subcommittee, is that yes, we're in favor of a residential overlay. So I, I think that's our first step, in my opinion, anyways. And, and I'm new to the council, so I'll yield to anybody that has a differing opinion. But I think that's first, and then I think we can narrow down of where we think the best residential overlays should fit our community as a whole. Councilor McGinn has a differing opinion than maybe I do, or, or, and we're all going to have to kind of narrow the, our scope, because I think we all think, it, or I'll speak for myself, I know my bigger fear is it being too expansive, it being too much, we already have traffic burdens, we, are, we already have um, overpopulated schools so it really has to be thought out in my opinion and it has to be thoroughly vetted and it can't just be a blanket over the entire city that we say we are now gonna have a residential overlay it's going to be here I, I think in my opinion we say yes we're in favor of a residential overlay and then pick where we think the best suit is for our community thank you councillor Rosenau councillor Sassler please so I, I think your point is well made, and just for the record, I'll be the first on the committee to say that I am in favor of a uh, residential, proposed residential overlay, absolutely, and um, I'll leave the rest of the properties for further discussion down the line. Thank you, Councillor Sasla. Councillor Gravel, please. Yeah, I, I think uh, Councillor Rosignol has it right. It's, uh, you typically approve the concept, and then you go to the map, and then you apply the concept to the map. That's how we did it before. It's, uh, um, and I think, you know, at that point in time, the only thing I would caution is uh, make sure you have the right map. <laughs> and, that, and, and it has the right outline on it because uh, we got ourselves into that the last time we did the zoning. And just to add on to that, yes, this, through the subcommittee is to get your feedback we'll finalize a map and then the next step would be public hearing and we'd have to have a uh, final map 
that would go to the public hearing and, and publicized and everything. So yes, we'll do that. Professionally done, not with uh, markers. So on that point, as the mayor said, you know, our ordinances, our zoning is a living, breathing document. Things are going to change through time. So even if something may not be appropriate to either the subcommittee or the council at this particular moment doesn't necessarily mean it can't be brought up again for future discussion or for future um, endeavors. Um, so I, I guess the first thing I would do is make a motion that we are in favor as a subcommittee of a residential overlay. So moved. Thank you, Councilor Rosignol. Uh, we're going to take a roll call vote on that and then move forward on uh, dis more discussion about the parcels. Tim, please. Mr. B Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, I should have asked. Any discussion on the motion? On the motion, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank yes. you. Just so we're clear on the motion through you to Councilor Rosignol, we're, we're, we're just talking about uh, taking the temperature on the concept Correct. here, right? We're not, we're not talking about approving anything or making a recommendation or moving anything out of committee at this point. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Discussion on the motion. There being none, roll call, please. Councilors McGinn. Yes. Rosigno. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Motion carries five to nothing. Thank you. So we're, we, as a committee, would like to entertain the concept of an overlay. Uh, we will continue the discussion about the particular parcels. Councilor Sharis, please. Yes, Mike. So since there's so much discussion on the different parcels, would it be best to take it up on a separate night so we can have, I mean, we, we have a bunch of parcels here that we need to talk about. Or do you want to get through the agenda that we have my thought, and with Tim's advice, is that we um, have Kurt, have Mr. Bellavance revise after hearing, and there could be more discussion that occurs, but have Mr. Bell Bellavance revise his recommendation, bring it back to us in subcommittee before we even um, consider moving it to the planning board. So if that works, uh, we'll continue discussion on the parcels. If I may continue, the, uh, just Kurt, so you understand, the, on the map of um, 114, the mall area there, um, it, my major concern is that mall, the, in, front of the, in front of the mall, it looks like it's on Andover Street, those parcels there. What I don't have, I would like to have more discussion on is on Cross Street and above. The rest of it, I, I, I wouldn't like to entertain at this time. Tim made a recommendation. Um, thank God for Tim, honestly. Is, is anybody renegotiating your contract yet? No. Um, this, the maps are hard to read because of the shaded area and the, as Councilor Manning Martin referred, it's, it's difficult to assess what parcels we're talking about. So Tim suggested for the next subcommittee meeting we have the assess, copies of the assessor's map for those particular, for the particular areas. Council Rosano, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I think hearing Council McGinn and hearing Council Sassala regarding parcel one and two, I, I think we can automatically take those two parcels off of any further discussion uh, from you, Mr. Bellavance, coming back to us. I think we're all in agreement on that one, uh, Council Sassel. Yeah, we, I was going to do that when we move forward on uh, keeping it in subcommittee. Any other comments from anyone? So, uh, Mr. Bellavant, you I think you have a temperature for the, what the council is looking to particular parcels we're looking for. Councilor Sassel, I'm going to ask for your advice. Um, are we in agreement that there should continue to be discussion about three and four, or are they both still in play? So, uh, in spite of some difference of opinions from other councilors, um, just to just to confirm, I I, I want to go back to one and two. I just didn't want to assume that um, 
I'd like publicly that you and Council Cherish on the subcommittee, are you both okay also taking out one and two so we have them, we know that? Uh, we agree. Okay. And uh, I would like to keep three and four open for discussion uh, when uh, Mr. Belvance comes back with the revised maps, please. Thank you, Councilor Saslow. So that being said, do you have, do you want to be specific about what we're looking for for the next meeting or are you, are you good on it? We're going to talk uh, Apostles 3 and 4 on Route 1, and we're going to um, talk about the cross street, um, excuse me, the 114 proposal, but you're going to see if you can highlight the Apostles better for us on the, using the assessor's map. Correct. All and, better maps. And do we keep the items that you had some difficulty with, Councilor Sharis, for discussion or do you want to see them out altogether? I would like to see them out altogether at this point. And if you want to come back at some point, um, but I, I don't want to hold up other parcels. Does that sound? Excuse me, because if we don't want to move forward, we have to then amend the paperwork before we go send it to the planning board. So, do you want to take those out, Kurt? The, uh, any other comments, Councilor McGinn? I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with, uh, with, with that recommendation, Mr. Chairman. I just think we should take a vote on it so that. Identifying Mr. Bellavance, can you be specific about what? Apostles or Councilor Sharis, about because the map is hard to read. Is that you have the body of the body of the mall, and then you have the road that runs through the well, no, through the middle of the map. I wish we had, as Councilor Manning Martin said, a PowerPoint set up for us. If you count the number of shaded parcels, Council of Sharis, one, two, three, four, five, six, six items that you have difficulty with? Uh, including the mall, I think there's almost 10. Yeah, no, I'm, we're, we're going to keep the mall in. I mean, I don't think we have problems with the mall. Okay. It's the item, the, the parcels that you identified that you were not in favor of. Well, I'm, I'm questioning the can we one. Take, can we take a one minute recess and meet at that table, please? Uh, so we can. Yeah, if, if, if that's allowed, if we have a motion. Yeah. yeah okay. One um, minute recess and we'll.
Can you hear me now? Test one, two. All right, thank you, councilors. Mr. Bellavance, are you comfortable now on what the council would like to see you come back with? Definitely. Please? All right. So that being said, we are going to keep this in committee. Is there any further discussion, I'm sorry, before we wrap up this phase of what we're here for? No? All right, we're going to keep this in committee and, and try to schedule another subcommittee as soon as possible. Yeah, but can we look for um, an off Thursday night? Can you do a... So the, if you're looking at February, the two off nights for council is the, if you're looking for a Thursday, the 7th or the 21st. Okay. Is, is anybody in the subcommittee not available next Thursday, the 7th? I'd love a full, full participation if possible. I'm assuming that crickets mean we're okay. <laughs> Joel, you okay? The seventh is fine, thank you. You and Ed in particular. Uh, technology and you are dangerous, Councillor Sheriff. Write it on the back of your hand. Okay. So roll call vote on keeping this in committee with the next committee subcommittee meeting on February 7th. Roll call, please. Councilors McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charest. Yes. Gould. Yes. Motion carries five to nothing. Thank you, councilors. We have more to do. Uh, Mr. Bellavance, God bless you. Item D, art use, zoning amendment art use. Council, uh, Mr. Bellavance, please. Uh, yes, uh, at this time I'm still working with the uh, city solicitor on how we define art. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a big question and how we apply that to the um, zoning ordinance. So right now we're not prepared to move forward with that um, and we'll try to come back at another time. Thank you, Mr. Bellavance. Any questions in regards to that? There being none, we'll move to, oh, there is. I'm sorry, Councilor Turco, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kurt, just one question that I just happened to notice this. Um, 
this would be allowed in the only one I had in all you know the mentioned districts but the one I question is the DDD and the only reason I, I wonder about that is because Dearborn um, and, and those parcels off of farm and Jubilee are all in the DDD and it wouldn't allow somebody in a residence to open an art use by by passing this with the DDD included would it uh, uh that may fall under a separate, which would be home occupation, which would, they would have a business in their home. So that would fall into something uh, different than that. And I think the reason we want to do include industrial or DDD was if someone is a sculptor and they're using you know, heavy equipment, machinery, welding, that type of art, uh, then we'd, want, we'd prefer that they were in more of an industrial setting. Um, so that's why that, that was put in there. But if somebody was gonna do something in their home, it would fall under uh, home occupation. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Turco. Any other questions on art use? There being none, we're going to move to item E, zoning amendment for studio motion picture and television filming. Mr. Bellavance, please. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. The, I did get uh, receive feedback in regards, and I believe at the last um, subcommittee meeting that I attended, uh, there were some questions uh, coming uh, that came up in regards to um, uh, the definition of uh, studio motion picture uh, filming and how we uh, went about that. Um, I did talk to uh, the uh, city solicitor who recommended that uh, instead of allowing that as a by right, uh, to allow it as a special permit. Uh, that way, if there's an applicant that comes before looking to occupy a building to do a film studio, uh, that the uh, city council would have control um, over that. Uh, and more specifically, if they were what kind of films uh, they intended to film at this location. And you could condition a special permit in re into that regards. So there could be uh, additional um, clarity on someone and what they want to do uh, in regards to a film studio. So that was the suggestion. Uh, it was the, the remainder of the language was the same, but instead of allowing that by right, it would be by a special permit. Thank you, Mr. Bellavance. Any discussion, councilors? So. Is the will of the committee to take a vote to send this to planning board? Councilor McGinn, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think the recommendation we just heard uh, from Mr. Bellavance was that we would the suggestion was to uh, amend the proposed language in section two uh, where it says uh, to amend section four, table 4.2, schedule use regulations to allow studio motion picture and television uh, filming by right. Uh, we want to change by right to by special permit. I think that was the, does that capture it, Mr. Bellavance? Correct. Uh, Mr. Clerk, did you get that? All right. Thank you for the motion. Uh, so, again. so the motion would be um, with with that edit incorporated to um, uh, recommend to the city council uh, out of this committee to advance this language to the planning board. So moved. You heard the motion. Any discussion? There being none, roll call. Roll call vote, please. Councilors McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Motion carries five to nothing. Excuse me, Council Gould, just as yes. a point of information. Um, so the committee makes a recommendation to the council as a whole, the council as a whole votes on it, and then it goes to the planning board. Is that the correct procedural? You're right. I, it doesn't go to the planning board. Recommendation to the full council. After the recommendation, after a vote from the full council. Vote from us, full council, planning board. Thank you. Appreciate that. I, I, mis I misstated that. And then it comes back to us. Council I, I think the motion was correct, though. The, the yeah, it was. Okay, yeah. thank you. No, it was my language saying we vote to send it to the planning board when we vote to send it to the full council. All right. Excuse me, Chairman. Can I just Councilor for a question? Once it goes to the planning 
council planning committee it comes back to the council as a whole for a vote correct planning board will hold a public hearing the city council will hold their own public hearing and the planning board will submit their recommendation to the to the council council takes the final vote basically there's twice in front of the council. whole there's two public hearings that's yes, Thank you, Councilor Sharis. Any other clarification needed? There being none. Mr. Bellavance, item F, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. The uh, next item uh, that I'm going to be talking about is the uh, what's called the Mill Overlay District. Um, this is a proposal that's about creating a place and what we want to see at a certain location, being proactive on behalf of the city. Um, what the proposal is about is trying to create value in an un underperforming asset that the city has by uh, allowing the property to bring in better tenants, higher rents, which therefore turns into higher tax revenues uh, for the city. Uh, it's also, um, this proposal is about providing a tool uh, that creates a higher and better use uh, where you would adopt this. Uh, it also uh, helps small businesses. It ends up uh, allowing mixed uses on properties that may uh, may not be able to go there uh, in, in the past and it complements each other. Um, it also, uh, it's, the proposal is for cleaning up former mill spaces. It's the mill overlay district. Uh, part of that involves uh, replacing life safety systems uh, providing handicap accessibility, removing Jersey barriers, uh, removing uh, any detriment to, uh, to a building that uh, may persuade people not to, uh, to rent there. Um, it's, not, um, it's not for basically taking raw land and cutting down trees and putting a new building up. It's taking existing uh, building and infrastructure that we have in the city and re reusing that and repurposing that. So what this mill overlay uh, district is, is meant to do is to, uh, to is, as I said, transform this underperforming uh, mill site uh, that it's, it's too costly to, uh, to demolish. Uh, it, the cost of it to, um, to add life safety systems, sprinklers, elevators, and so forth uh, is a little bit more money than it would be a brand new building. Uh, so what we're doing through this proposal is allowing more commercial uses to be allowed uh, on the property uh, so that they can expand and they can work off one another. Uh, it doesn't fit uh, existing at the property's underlying zoning is industrial. It doesn't fit current 21st century needs uh, for industrial buildings. Uh, they look for uh, 20 foot plus high ceilings, uh, loading docks, uh, several loading docks, uh, issues like that. Um, a lot of this property, the, there's eight foot ceilings, uh, there's 12 foot ceilings, so it's not, uh, it's not meant uh, as, as industrial development was created in the, in the uh, 19th and 20th century. It doesn't fit the mold, fit the mold now for 21st century. Um, what the proposal's not about, it's not about eliminating any commercial uses uh, and creating massive residential. It's about adding uh, more commercial um, in fact, part of the language uh, states that the only residential could be in an existing building. Uh, so there were, it's not allowed to build new buildings or new residential uh, through that model. Um, it's also, again, Mr. as I- Mr. Bellavance, yeah. if I may, um, we're talking one site specific address. Correct. And, Correct. and if you look at, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if you look at our paperwork, it's the last page before it goes into the item C memorandum from Mr. Bellavance. Um, it's right by itself out front. Its address is 58 Pulaski. Thank you, Mr. Bellavance. Back to you. Correct, and there are four structures. And this is set up similar to the residential where you would accept the language and then you would apply that to a map. It's Council Manning Mind, do you have some clarification? Just for clarification for folks back here, it's just for 58. 
correct? Correct. So the whole portion of the other map, the first map, that is gray highlighted prior to it, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six buildings that include theirs, is not being put forward to be rezoned, correct? Correct. I think the, the problem was that they're showing parking on, on the site, they're showing the paved areas, and I think it, it looks like it's the whole area. I think one of the maps I showed was to kind of give you a general sense of the Pulaski Street area, and then the, the second map was the highlighted yeah. area. Not to say that we can't add that. Um, certainly, as I have come before the board, I like bigger, and I've been, it's been suggested I start small. So, um, again, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, this is uh, what this proposal is: is, is preventing uh, projects like 40 Bs to come along. Uh, we're trying to make a underperforming property uh, more successful. Therefore, there's no need. Uh, for development of residential housing. Um, and we're not talking about, this proposal isn't talking about eliminating traffic. We're basically talking about uh, changing traffic patterns. So what we're looking at doing is, is removing 18 wheelers and replacing that with cars and, and maybe some box trucks. So you're looking at uh, similar traffic but uh, less obnoxious uses like 18 wheelers. Um, and it's definitely, it's definitely not a housing project or housing development projects. It's, it's more about allowing more commercial spaces uh, to a property that uh, is limited by the underlying zoning. Um, so with that, I'd like to uh, talk about the zoning uh, overlay district itself. Um, just briefly, uh, the purpose in, in listing the uh, mill overlay, it, it talks about encouraging mixed mixed use of sites. It talks about using existing uh, facilities and infrastructure. Uh, it talks about using a more effective use of existing property, uh, so that we're talking about existing uh, buildings and not new buildings. Um, it's talking about not, not encouraging development in the floodplain. Uh, it talks about uh, providing any development of the site would in encourage more pedestrian on-site uh, access, bicycle access and those types of things. It's in, it, it also encourages the uh, building material and the designs of the, um, of the exterior of the building because we are talking about existing buildings uh, already. Um, the, it references the underlying zoning um, and, and how you would deal with underlying zoning versus the, a, a special permit or allowed uses through the mill overlay. Uh, you can't pick and choose between well, I'm going to use this for the underlying zoning and I'm going to use this for the mill overlay. Uh, it's either choose one or the other, and with an application, we would verify that. Um, but basically, the, the highlights of the, of the zoning district are what's allowed uh, by right and what's allowed um, by special permit. So the list <coughs> uh, of uh, special per uh, uh, by right uh, includes uh, existing mill uh, existing mixed-use buildings, uh, which we would have on the site. Um, it would include uh, a multifamily of no more than 12 units and not to um, excess of 10% of the building property. So, for example, this, these three buildings are uh, approximately 18,000, I mean 180,000 square feet. So any residential would have to occupy less than 18,000 square feet in an existing building. Uh, it also mentions that it has to be above the first two floors. So I believe uh, these buildings in that entire Pulaski site are the only ones with more that have a third or fourth floor on those buildings. Um, it, this was modified a little bit from what you have had, what you have before you as, again, this was presented originally in October, and I've made some, some minor changes based on some of the feedback uh, from the city councilors. Uh, it includes uh, buy right retail, retail establishments, but excludes automobile related, and that would be less than 4,500 square feet. Uh, it includes bakery, uh, a restaurant, uh, less than 3,000 square feet. So we're talking about small, small spaces and not large, uh, large types of uses. It includes uh, personal service establishments, um, which 
which is listed in the uh, zoning ordinance as uh, including but not limited to barbershop, beauty shop, shoe repair, self-service laundry, retail, dry cleaning establishment, tailoring shop, upholstery shop, and photographic studio. Council Manning Mott. Thank you, and that is in our zoning um, list of uses. I must. Yes. I was looking for it today. I couldn't find it, but it is there. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, it also uh, lists a ATM as long as it's accessible from the interior of the building. They can't have an a, a ATM outside of the building. Uh, includes uh, indoor recreation and a museum. So those are the uh, items that would be listed as uh, by right. The listed items by special permit uh, would be uh, multifamily greater than 12 units, uh, which could not, also could not exceed 10% of the size of the, of the building's square foot. And again, within an existing building. It goes on to say that uh, there's no residential is allowed in any building built after the adoption of this ordinance. Then it goes on to retail sales as a special permit over 4,500 square feet. So that would be that would have to come back to the uh, to the city council, or a restaurant over 3,000 square feet. That would have to come back to the uh, city council as well. Um, it would also uh, prohibit a freestanding ATM machine, uh, and it would prohibit uh, drive-through facilities as well. Uh, I'm sorry, it wouldn't prohibit. It would allow a uh, via a special permit. So those would have to come back before the city council. And then lastly, the piece is any accessory use customarily incidental to any of the above permitted uses, provided that such shall not be noxious or dangerous to the neighborhood. So if, and the only thing I could really think of is that if you had, for example, and it, it wouldn't apply here, but if you had a residential uh, development that had a, a gymnasium in it or something like that, that may be considered a, uh, an, an accessory use. Um, I couldn't really come up with a, an exact uh, example, but needless to say, that would have to come back before the city council. So if there was a gray area uh, in that, it would have to be presented to the city council. The rest of the language goes on to talk about parking, landscaping, facades, and sign improvements. As I said, the, the majority of the design features would be applied to the exterior of the building, uh, so that we're, we're looking at how the building's gonna look, how's it gonna function from an exterior point. And so we added that language in there that the anyone going to use this would have to apply those requirements uh, to what they are looking to do um, in, regards to, in, to God, in regards to the uses. And then finally, the uh, waivers. I had originally put in that the uh, council would waive dimensional, but I, I thought better that it, uh, uh, in, in hearing feedback from the council that that should remain with the Zoning Board of Appeals. That's their responsibility to waive dimensional requirements, and I would leave that with the board. And then I also added one piece about uh, any, any residential would be subject to the inclusionary uh, zoning. So that's a, a, a sum, brief summary of the uh, overlay. Um, again, um, this property has changed hands over several years uh, and has been at, at one point fallen in, in real disrepair where it's my understanding there was uh, several um, illegal issues with, with not the ownership but with what was going on uh, within the building. Uh, working with the new owner uh, who's tried to clean it up and has done a great job at cleaning the property up, uh, removing some of that activity, uh, trying to uh, clean up areas that um, uh, basically things are going on that, that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, and they're trying to bring in better businesses uh, to that property. So that's been going on uh, in regards to that. Um, and finally, uh, we're just trying to promote a more desirable uh, mix of uses for this property where the uh, developer can uh, look to create options for for folks to come and visit mixed use of, uh, of people coming and going in regards to that and have complementary uh, uses in typical mixed use uh, buildings that work off uh, one another and promote one another um, and it's just something s supportive through our office that uh, you know moving this forward uh, 
puts Peabody in a better position um, and not doing anything uh, leaves, leaves a status quo for, for what's existing there. Um, I know the owner of the site is here too, uh, if there's any specific questions uh, in regards to that, but um, I'm here to answer any questions that uh, people may have in regards to the, to the Mill Overlay District. Thank you, Mr. Bellavance. I'll open it up to the committee. Anybody care to discuss? Councilor Rosignol, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll be honest with you. The first time I heard this proposal, I was a little bit skeptical. Um, and it took a ride with um, Mr. Bellavance, with Councilor Turco, and um, Al Tellerico. And to see it in action up in, was it North Andover? Or, and to, to see what this could potentially become was pretty impressive. Um, and it's funny, you know, my mind kind of in the beginning was really dead set against it because I'm like, oh my God, it's going to be half residential, half commercial. And when we went up to North Andover, it was, I want to say, what was it, 80% commercial and if that 20%. And this was expansive. This was three and four times the size of what we're talking about. But it's, it's a really good use of space for commercial use. They had restaurants, it was vibrant, it, they had coffee shops, it was, it was a pretty impressive use of uh, what was an old dilapidated mill. And it was very similar to what I can envision here. So I, I appreciate um, you bringing this forward and um, thank you. Councillor Mitsoulis, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I'm very pro-business. I think most of you know that. Um, but I've got to tell you what my concerns are. I've, um, I've been to the places, Councillor Rosig, now you're talking about, and I agree with you, they're great places. But this is a live industrial park. It's not an office use park. There's dirty, people, the types of businesses in there, you dirty your hands, trucks go in and out. It's just a different type of place. And we're trying to change that, and I totally understand. And uh, we're trying to change a building. And I'm 100%, if that's what we're doing, we're, we're going to change the use of that building, I'm 100% for it but I'm not gonna change the neighborhood. And I'm gonna tell you what my concern is. My concern is the mixed use of housing on the top floor. I don't care if you're talking 1% or 100%. The uses don't mix in an old industrial park like that. You will get the complaints from the top floor into trucks coming in and out or whatever their complaint's going to be. And then let's just imagine this. Let's imagine uh, they put together their coalition and start driving those businesses out of there. Okay, now what do we have? We don't have six units up above. We have 2,000 units in the whole industrial park. There's no guarantee to that, you know. Um, you know, as far as cleaning up the building and everything, you know, that's, listen, you got to live up to code. That's going to happen. They're going to fix it up. And as far as the uses inside that property, we've already made our move here. We allowed the brewery to go in. And I'm 100% allowing other businesses to go in there, even restaurants. And, and you know what? The, the, the uses that you're asking for is going to create... Uh, a lot of life in that business, in that area. It's going to create a lot of cars. Is that what the neighbors want? If, if they're fine with that, that's fine with me. You know, I will support that. And I will help you 100%. You know, we talked, uh, we met a couple times already, and uh, 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 you were telling me the type of uses that would be going upstairs and only m millennials would be... Uh, you know, you, you, you'd craft it for millennials, and I said to myself, what the heck's a millennial? I looked it up, and, uh, you know, a, millen a millennial is uh, 
uh, the children of the baby boomers. It's us, my kids. My kids could never afford a, an apartment upstairs of, uh, in your place. But it's not the cost, it's not the affordability. I go a step further because as I've said, I've been around for a long time. Let me tell you, I'm not going to name the names, okay? Uh, not too far from your building, there have been requests to put um, uh, apartment buildings in two different locations. And I said to them, this was 30 years ago. They even asked me today. They still, in, in, uh, uh, I tell them, you're not zoned for it. You can't do it. You're here as a non-conforming use, okay? Now, if I put up one unit in that building, those people will be putting up a bunch of apartment buildings right in that neighborhood. And that is my opposition to this, because you will, you will have lawsuits over this. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying. That's what I think we'll be looking at. So what's that mean? We've changed the neighborhood, you know? Zoning may be a good thing, and I know the purpose of it is to make Peabody a better place, but, you know, it doesn't work in every spot, it doesn't work every place, and it's not the right thing for certain places. I don't believe that, I'm with you 100% when you talk about changing that building, I'm with you 100%. I believe that, uh, that this council will support you. I, you know, myself personally, because I know the neighborhood and I know the ramifications of this vote, and what it's going to lead to, I personally can't support it. But if you take out the wording and take out those apartment units, I'll be 100% behind you. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Councilor Sassler, please. Thank you. Um, with the um, with the owners here, could could they maybe come to the podium? I did have a couple of questions. If there's no objection amongst the committee. Sure. Ed, would you like to come up and talk about your vision for the building, please? Uh, hello, my name is uh, Ed Greeley, and um, Ed, can we please, for the record, could you state your name and address? Uh, you stated your name. Could you tell okay. us your address, please? Uh, my address, uh, my, my work address is 58 Pulaski Street. Thank you. And uh, my home address is uh, 85 Farm Street in Wakefield. <laughs> okay. I, um, I've, uh, I, I've been a tenant in that building uh, for several years. And uh, my cousin and I, who is over in the corner there, uh, we pulled all the money we could pull between our uh, family and ourselves, and um, we, um, we're, we're remodelers. Uh, we own a kitchen cabinet company, and uh, we had a couple of locations. We had one down in Marlboro, Mass. We had another one in uh, Wakefield. Uh, we had one up uh, next to the Home Depot in Salem, New Hampshire. And like small businesses know, uh, it was difficult managing multiple locations, and we were looking to try to um, bring everything a little bit to a singular location. And, uh, uh, I bumped into Pulaski Street, and uh, the thing that attracted me about the property was that uh, A, it was extremely affordable at the time, uh, so that was great, and, it, and I could get my hands on a lot of room. So I ended up uh, leasing out 12,000 square feet, and uh, we uh, had a few tips from a few of the other local businesses, uh, like the, uh, at the uh, plumbing supply house and um, the, uh, the PBD warehouse and supply, I believe it was up on Tremont. And uh, everybody agreed that, geez, if you could, you know, if you get into that building, you know, we, we think you guys would do really well. So we took a shot, and uh, we went in the building as a tenant, and uh, it far exceeded our expectations. Uh, we never imagined that we would do as good as we did in our first year of business there. And uh, as a result, we kind of expanded a little bit on the property. And to make a long story short, we, we spent just about every dollar we had in, the in, the, in our business, which at the time was about, you know, half a million dollars. 
Um, you know, the, the, the owners at the time, they, didn't, uh, they weren't doing us any favors. They weren't going to add any heating or cooling or electrical or plumbing or anything like that. So we, we did it all on our own. And uh, we, we, we went at it. And, uh, well, you know, years go on and you kind of, we didn't, I didn't really explore the property too, too much. But, um, you know, it didn't, it didn't take long to figure out what was going on in there. You know, it was, bottom line is there wasn't a professional business in the property when I moved in there. Um, there was uh, a few reputable businesses that were doing some, uh, I think, good things with some antiques. But, you know, bottom line is there just wasn't a lot of good businesses in there. And then there was a bunch of other activity that was going on. And uh, there was, I, I guess, probably about three or four years ago, there was some talk of the property getting sold. And my cousin and I were kind of, you know, we were getting nervous. You know, we spent a bunch of money on our space. And, you know, we didn't want to lose, you know, our investment. And so I, I had approached the owners at the time. And, you know, they made some crazy deal, and I, you know, one that I could absolutely not afford at the time, and, uh, you know, it never really happened, to, it never really came to pass, and uh, anyway, about uh, a little over a year ago, uh, that, that changed, and one day I was approached, and, they, and uh, you know, I was asked, do you, do you still have any interest? And I said, you know, actually, I, I, I do. Now, I'm, a, I'm several years a little bit more intelligent than I was when I first came in the building, so I, you know, I, I have a little bit more experience and a little bit more knowledge, and I knew that if I could buy the property, I, I, I knew what I could do with it. And uh, so we took a shot, you know, and I was fortunate enough to, uh, to get some good financing through a good local bank. I was fortunate enough to come into some contact with some really good people uh, in the community. And uh, they, you know, they, they all were quite upfront with me and they said, you know, we can't guarantee you anything, but if you want to take a shot, you know, we'll work with you guys a little bit. So we took a shot. and. Um, you know, I always envisioned every day going down the hill, I always envisioned like this, like, we t like I heard earlier, like this community, you know, like uh, we could have, uh, you know, food and beverage and entertainment and, you know, people uh, coming in and coming out and working and, uh, you know, some of the most beautiful views that are on that property are absolutely on those top floor plates. Uh, you go up to the top floor of that building. You know, one thing uh, real important to, to, that I think I should point out is when you get to the second and the, and the third floors, the ceiling height is, is eight feet, but actually there are columns, the beams, these concrete massive beams that run right down that are literally less than six feet. So you couldn't put residential on those floor plates if you wanted to. I mean, you'd have to be my height to move in and, and then you'd be right at the ceiling. So you, it, it's impossible. It, it's not a residential building, quite frankly. But, but, some of the, but some of the most beautiful views on that property are in fact on the top floors. Um, I'm a small business. Uh, I'm not a developer. I don't do, I'm not a developer full time. Uh, I'm a remodeler. I have a couple of different businesses. This is not, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not coming to you as a, as a, as a developer that this is what I do and I set up, you know. Uh, this is, I looked at this as like a project. Uh, we're family owned. Uh, my mother literally works with me. My wife works with me. My cousin's here. You know, we have extended family members, friends that work with us. and. Uh, you know, we wanted to look at this as kind of like a challenge. You know, hey, uh, here's a building. We can kick the crap out of it, do a really good job, uh, you know, and, and, and do something that you can look back and be proud of, you know. And, uh, and really, that's, that's the honest to God truth. This, it's, it's not a sales pitch. It's, we, this is, this is, we have something in front of us. It's a challenge, and we want to look, and we want to get 20 years down the road and look back and go, hey, look what we did, you know. And, uh, so with that, um, you know, we mentioned I heard I heard a lot about traffic, and uh, you know, the the average business in the building right now uh, has approximately uh, four employees, um, some less, some more, but it's the average, uh, you know, the average uh, business in the property has four employees. You know, that typically is about an average of four vehicles. Um, some of these businesses have sh uh, shipping and receiving, so we do have the box trucks showing up to the property, offloading, uploading. We have 53-foot trailers that come in, and they're kind of sparring a little bit for what little dock space is left. So when, I, when we talk about traffic and the stress on the community, you know, the reality is, is this, is uh, if we do get some use up on those top floor plates that have those beautiful views, um, it, it's actually going to lessen the traffic to the property because it's, you know, it's, people are going to have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning to be on the road by 6.30, you know, like my wife, when she worked in Boston, had to do, and they're going to get caught up in rush hour, and they're going to be home at, at uh, you know, 6 o'clock at night, more than likely. So you're going to have one to two vehicles that are going to disappear all day long. 
and while the rest of the businesses are kind of coming and going regularly with shipping and trucking, I mean, does that make sense? It's not a traffic strain to the property. It actually lessens the property to a degree. But, you know, one really important thing I wanted to point out. Mixed-use uh, Forbes recently published an article, in, uh, and in that article, they talked about uh, why uh, mixed-use communities are thriving right now. And in that article, uh, and Google it when you get a chance, uh, they, they talk about what happens for every dollar that gets spent in a mixed-use community, uh, up to approximately 70% on that dollar actually stays in that community. Whereas in a non-mixed-use community, approximately 15 cents gets uh, s uh, captivated in that community. So really what, what some minor residential would allow for those businesses on that property, like hopefully Rochelle, is what could happen is you'd find that some of the people that would uh, occupy that property as a resident, they're going to see Rochelle for a haircut, they're going to see Diane for an exit for a workout, you know, they're going to go down to the brewery and have a beer, um, they're going to go down to the food hall and get a sandwich, you know, they're going to spend their money on the property because, you know, I know we're talking about millennials, but it's really, it's everybody. We all live for convenience to some extent, you know? So it's the convenience of the, uh, of the, of the property that would allow for this, for the businesses underneath it to, you know, is it gonna keep them in business? No, but is it a little bit extra? Yeah, it is. And sometimes when you're a small business, a little bit extra is, you know, it's pretty damn good. So it's, uh, I think it's a business model and it's not predicated around, it's not a residential first project. It's a commercial first project, but allowing some residential to better support those businesses that would be below them. And, uh, and on the noise piece, and, and it's just an opinion, and I guess your opinion matters a lot more than my opinion, but I will say this. The type of person that would move into that property or that couple that would move into that property, they're not looking for a whisper quiet environment. They're moving into an energetic environment, you know, like you do, like people that, young people that want to move into the North End. You know, I have friends that, you know, when they got out of school, they wanted to go to the North End and they're spending, and I'm not talking about it's not going to be North End prices if we get the allowance, guys. I, but they, they go down there for the energy, and with the energy comes a little bit of noise, and it's part of the deal. You know, you got the buses and the cars and the honking of the horns and, the, and, the, and, and, all, the, and all the activity that comes along with it. Um, I, I, can, you cut, can you always cut the complaints out? No. I've been looking at Facebook and... Uh, it is always going to be complaints. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter. What, I, I'm going to say black and there's always going to be people that are going to say white and it's just the way it's going to be. And, uh, but I do believe the people in the, in the community, um, I think some of which that I've talked to, they, they kind of appreciate what's going on. You know, uh, I was thinking about it coming over here. You know, we mo it's going to, maybe it sounds stupid and maybe, I'll, I don't know, my, my cousin will tell me afterward. But, you know, when we got there, we mowed the lawn. We planted some flowers. Uh, the guy that works, the guy that owns the Lands Electric, he popped off and he said, you know, uh, in 20 years that I've been up the street, nobody's ever planted flowers and mowed the lawn. I appreciate it. And, uh, and, you, know, and, and you know why we did that? Because we take pride in it, you know. Uh, we want to do a good job, um, and we want something to be proud of. And it's, that's not a fancy sales pitch. That's the honest-to-God truth. And uh, given the opportunity, we'll make the city proud. We'll drive some revenue. And... Uh, We'll make our contribution to the city, and, and, I, and it'll be a damn good one. I, I can promise you that. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Don't go away. I'm sure there's questions for you. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to. I, I we pulled together a, a meeting at 58 Pulaski uh, Wednesday, yesterday morning, and Councilor McGinn, Councilor Melville, and myself, and Councilor Masulis uh, were able to sit and hear about Mr. Greeley's vision. Can you speak, Mr. Greeley, please, about the flipping of the entrance, in, uh, front door, front side, back side, please? Because that's important as you, in my opinion, as you drive in now, it's not gonna look that way in, in the near future, please. I, uh, the first time I, uh, I hope I get this right. It's, First time I took my son on a duck boat, uh, the captain of the duck boat let him drive the duck boat. My son, he was three years old and he lit up like a Christmas tree and it was like one of the, it was, it was a cool little moment for my wife and I. I've been, ever since I've, you know, they, they did the road work at the Dunkin' Donuts there, 
um, you know, every morning I'll typically I'll go to the Dunkin' Donuts, I'll do the turnaround, and I always kind of peer off at the water. And for some reason, I keep looking at that water going, I want to put a duck boat back there. And uh, I just think it would be a cool thing. Uh, I've been looking at the, uh, you know, my now property, and every time I look at the back, I, I, uh, what I am going to do, and I've already started the process, uh, but I've been real careful with the process because the process costs money, and I want to know what I can and cannot do with the property, so I guess that's what I'm kind of here for tonight. Um, I'm going to take the back of the property, and I'm going to convert it to the front of the property. Uh, my, my resources, as far as my investment in terms of the project, uh, are going to focus on the rear, um, and, and the reason is, is because there is a, you know, there's the track, you know, the, the contractors that like to pull around the corner, and you know, I, I want to, uh, I want to, I want to landscape, I want to put some tables, I want to put out some pavers, I want to put a deck out there, um, I want, I want the presentation to be in the rear rather than in the front. Uh, the new elevator that I'm putting on the property is uh, it's it's not going in the front of the building It's actually going in the rear of the building because I want to start drawing people from the rear uh, Some of the parking I'm going to put in the rear and the parking is uh, Where the infamous buses were parked for a number of years, correct? That po uh, yes, it's possible uh, although we still have uh, the prop we have the um, the land uh, up to that point and we still have the uh, the land off to the side and then the rear. Question, any questions of Mr. Greeley? Councilor Saslaw, please. Thank you. Uh, so thank you for coming up and sharing your story and your vision, and thank you for investing in Peabody. Um, I was not able to get up there uh, yesterday morning, uh, but I certainly will. Uh, I would like to make plans to get up there and maybe tour the property with you because you know, you said a lot, and I'd like to kind of get a little bit of vision. Um, just talking about um, the uh, 12 units that would be uh, permitted if we pass this, what would you do as far as uh, how many two bedrooms, how many be one bedrooms have you? Uh, obviously, you've thought it through, I'm sure. Can you give me an idea of what you're looking at? I'm planning on building lofts, uh, no bedroom open concept. Um, I uh, recently uh, was able to permit a company uh, called ButcherBox, and ButcherBox is a uh, they're a an online uh, it's it's an online cooking show. They have uh, how many subscribers? 111,000 people that purchase food from them on a uh, on a on a monthly basis. They're an extremely successful company that came out. I was able to. Uh, get to a track from Cambridge and I built them a uh, $125,000 commercial kitchen. When you go to the fourth floor in building B and you go to the, and essentially what we did is we built a loft. It's a really, it's an awesome space. They have, we built them out a, a, a beautiful bathroom because the cook is, you know, he has to clean, and he, you know, after he's done cooking and um, we built a beautiful kitchen and it's just, it's an amazing space. and. I've brought in quite a few people up there that when they walk into this space, it's, it's, a, it's a movie set, but it's, it's a loft, no bedroom. Uh, I've had so many, I, I've had a lot of people say, I would love to live in this. Uh, there's actually a call, now I personally wouldn't live there, because um, I got three children, but, uh, but there's a call for these types of uh, open concept uh, lofts. Uh, matter of fact, uh, in the Merrimack Valley, they have a, uh, if you're familiar with uh, uh, Sal Pizza, the, the buildings that are on the, on the Merrimack River there, um, they put in a bunch of open concept lofts and uh, they're gone, they, they sold out immediately. Um, which, while I'm on the topic, I don't plan on selling these. Uh, these will be uh, not for sale. Uh, I don't, we're not gonna develop a condo association. We're gonna, uh, we would rent them out just like we would to a commercial tenant. So Mr. Greeley, to Councilor Sasla's question there, one, one bedroom open living, one bedroom. One bedroom open living. Okay. And um, what, what would you look as the proposed rents for the residential units? What, what do you th what's the ballpark, the range? They would be in and around, depending upon the size, naturally, but somewhere is between 1800 and 2000 a month, which is kind of falls in line, depending upon the space. You and, know? And, and I assume, sounds like each unit probably two parking spaces and then you'd have some visitor parking space set aside? 
That is correct. Okay. And may, may I just say one thing? Uh, it, it's a difficult question to answer as far as how much, because how much will be predicated upon the square footage. I'm basing that, that amount off of, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of about a 1,200 square foot apartment. We're which not, We're not going to hold you to it. Okay, yeah, in, in the city of Peabody, uh, you know, the average right now, 865 square foot apartment is leasing out for somewhere in the neighborhood of about $1,600. So th those amounts are right in line with what the city of Peabody is already doing. Thank you. And so, you know, I, 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 once again, I, I do listen to the ward councilor. He brings up some points that concern me. Um, you know, it was difficult to cast a vote tonight is um, without knowing what the neighbors think. Because, you know, I don't know what type of, um, you know, the neighbors, you know, they're stakeholders, just like we talked about. You're a stakeholder, you put, you know, you put down the flowers and you have skin in the game. And so it, it's, a, it's a difficult situation for me because as I said, I always want to do get an idea of what the neighbors think. I, I don't know if they have any idea what's going on. I know they knew about King Street. That's gotten a lot of press. Um, I don't know what they know about this particular area. Um, so it's, it's tough for me to make an informed decision without um, having some input from them. Um, I, do re I do like the fact that, I understand you talk about the energy, I get the energy, what you're talking about. Um, and I think why I need to go down and look at your property is because there are a lot of um, industrial, light industrial businesses that will be, that are in the back. And, you know, from just as many businesses back there, many different types of businesses. And so that, um, you know, knowing sometimes the traffic paddings, knowing, you know, sometimes a concern would be, you know, I don't know, Councilman Sewers probably knows, I don't know what the working hours are on that industrial park as far as what time a truck can go in there if it's 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 5.30 a.m. But, um, you know, it does concern me to a degree that, you know, you put people in there and uh, understand the energy, understanding everything else, you know, someone gets in there and they're pissed off that on a Saturday at 7 o'clock there's a couple of trucks rumbling through. And so I'm not asking you to answer that question. I'm just throwing it out there that a concern that I, that I have that I probably have to do a little bit more research and maybe with uh, talking to Councilman Sellers he can explain to me some of those uses and what the hours of operation are because, you know, it's that fine balance when you um, take residential and you put them with... Um, you know, an industrial park, a light industrial park, and, and, and where's that balance? But um, I appreciate you sharing your vision. I, I, I believe, truly believe what you said, and, and I like what you're saying, but I, I, as I said, I just wanted to express a couple of my concerns, and, and I definitely uh, have an open mind to it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Sassler. Councilor Rosignol, then Councilor Manning Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I, I mentioned in my um, earlier remarks that Councilor Turco and, Council, and, and Mr. Bellavance, we went up to the Mill District up in North Andover. After we left there, I, I visited your property and I took a tour with Councilor Turco and, and your cousin. And, and I can see your vision and I understand it. And, and I'm extremely happy that you're gonna change the entrance to the other side, because one of my concerns is where, this map is really small, Pulaski, what's that, Rare Street, kind of cuts that property in half because I'm, I'm under the understanding that you're going to purchase the building across that street as well. So my fear, before you had mentioned changing the parking to the other side, is there are 18 wheelers that go from the back um, industrial park. And that would be a concern of mine that that cut through when you're talking about mixed use and commercial and restaurants, that there are going to be 18 wheelers kind of whipping by there, trying to get their goods out to consumers. So the, the, the one piece that I was actually really hesitant about, you alleviated in my mind, where you're going to have the business traffic completely separated to the your abutters in the back and their truck traffic. So I appreciate that. And I appreciate your vision. I think that that is a building that has been long dormant and this type of use is going to really service our city in a great capacity so i appreciate it thank you 
Thank that, you, Councilor Thank Rosino. you. Councilor Manning Martin, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I as well uh, came with an open mind on this um, idea. And I'm, I'm leaning with the Ward Council regarding the residential piece um, and w with rents. It sounds as though they're going to be studios, open concept kind of studio. And if you get individuals that can pay and will pay $2,000 for a studio, they are going to, um, and I understand, and I think it would emphasize the Wood Council is concerned that they will have complaints that will drive out businesses that have been there and have been existing with their, their trucks or their hours of operation. $2,000 a month for a studio, they're going to make demands, and um, that, that's just going to happen. I, I can't see any other um, any other way that that would, would uh, pan out. So I don't see that coexisting with the, with the businesses that have been down there and even businesses that you want to bring in. So I, um, I, I do see a lot of positive things with this, the small businesses that you do want to bring in, um, potentially restaurants. And again, as Council Sasla says, that we probably should uh, hear from the neighbors a little bit more on this subject. I totally do not want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I think that there are some great things in here, and I think it would improve the neighborhood. It would bring in some revenue. It would clean up. Uh, I think I, I have been into your um, the brewery. It's it's really cool. Um, so, and I've been to Di uh, Diane's uh, gym, and you know, it's it's you really picking it's really picking up down there, and I do want to support it. And again, I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but the um, it's really uh, really difficult for me to support residential residential down there because I do not think that they can coexist with the current businesses nor what you hope to bring in. So with that, um, I'm hoping that we can probably work on this a little bit more. And lastly, my question to uh, Kurt Bellevance is that this only captures 58 Pulaski Street. So how is it that this is not spot zoning and that we would be able to make changes in just one particular site that doesn't affect others without, op opening, without opening ourselves up to potential lawsuits that we are spot zoning and denying other people uh, similar um, uses right next door or in that area. So if you could uh, address that, please. Thank you, Councilor Manning Martin. Mr. Bellavance, please. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, similar to um, what uh, Councilor Rosignol had brought up before, it's a two-prong uh, approach. So one is the adoption of the mill overlay district in itself, by itself, not necessarily including uh, any property whatsoever. Uh, then the next step is to include property after, after that. So this piece we're looking at is it's, it's not spot zoning because you're creating, basically creating a district uh, then you go pro and then you go forward and, and apply that to different locations, and that would be up to the up to the council. Thank you. If we were to approve this without the residential piece, though, then it's not captured in the overlay, correct? If we were to tweak it a little bit and not have residents, then it wouldn't be captured in your overlay. Is that correct? Right. If that's something that the, the council chooses to uh, remove that piece from the overlay, then that's, that's an option for the council. But if we remove that from the overlay, then this 58 Pulaski wouldn't fall under the umbrella of overlay. It would be something completely different, wouldn't it? No, no, it would be. So the, the language itself, the mill overlay, all those uses, uh, you can add uses or remove uses, <clears throat> for example, like the residential then you can still go ahead and apply that mill overlay to other areas you know, throughout the city. And that would apply whatever's in that language, whether it includes residential or doesn't include residential. Okay, and be. thank you. And then so the mall, is that the, an overlay too? That's under the overlay as well, and that's residential. That's a residential overlay. Not right. the mill overlay. Correct. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Right, the, so th thank you very much, and you explained that perfectly, Kurt. I appreciate it. And uh, again, I think that there's a lot that can be done not down there to improve things, but I think it does need a little work. And I, I cannot, unless, you know, 
I'm convinced otherwise I'm, I'm pretty much against any residential down in that area. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Manning Martin. Um, why don't we procedurally do the motion as you did, Councilor Rosignol, uh, to get a feel whether we want to have an overlay in this district, please. Make a motion for an overlay district, uh, a, a mill overlay district, so moved. Any dis you heard the motion, any discussion on the motion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, on the motion, um, just same point of clarification. We're not advancing anything. We're not making any recommendations. Concept. We are taking, a, taking the temperature, right, just for the record. We're not. Uh, Correct. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. On the motion, any discussion? Just so basically all the, we're, we're basically voting on the intent. We're not voting on any of the verbiage that was included uh, in the pages. We're going to we're going to modify that possibly. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Let me begin on the motion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I. Um, can we have some additional debate after this motion, Mr. Chairman? Thank you. Then I'll, I'll, thank you. Any other discussion on the motion, Councilor Turco? No, Mr. Chair, I, I would also like to continue the, date, the debate. That's, okay, thank you. Yeah, I know that. Uh, so on that motion, so we can decide whether we want to advance an overlay in 58, or this district, the Mill District. Uh, roll call vote, please. Councilors McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Motion carries. Five to nothing. All right. Back to the discussion. Councilor Turco, you're up, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So my questions are a lot of them were answered by through Councilor Manning Martin's questions. Um, this whole property is listed as 58. Pulaski Street. Every building and each building has a different building number, correct? So, I, I believe it's there's it's listed as 58 and 58 rear. So technically, I think everything would be may be considered 58. It would need some clarification. Okay, so I just for clarification on my part, I called you earlier today and I asked you how this would affect other buildings um, in the district as far as use. And you told me, you know, that the use uses would be allowed by other buildings, and maybe there was some confusion on that. But I guess I'll just get to to the point of my question. I agree with the the councilor. Um, it's something that we might have to ease into with the the residential portion. But would this committee, um, and, and I'm not looking at this a rhetorical question, would this committee be willing to allow the uses at this site so that Mr. Greeley can move forward with his plan, because I think what I kind of got from you is that um, you know you you put almost everything you have in, in investment in this. You'd probably like to rent out some of these spaces, and I guess Council Matsoulis, it, it's more you know it's it's your ward. I, I think you've had time to, to look over the uses. Would you be amenable to allowing him the uses, with the exception of the residential portions, so that he can move forward um, with his plan? I, I already said that, Councilor, I would be, yep. Thank you. My second question is, would, would this council be amenable to adding, and I'm just going to come out and say it, I mean, we have Habitat for Humanity here, and I think that I, I was under the impression that, through my conversation with Kurt, that the retail portion of this overlay would be able to help them. And um, the way I'm reading is that it, it won't, unless we include Building 14 f in the overlay, for the uses only, not for residential, so that Habitat can then stay in operation as a retail establishment under this overlay district. Um, it would be one of the buildings that I would like to add, as Kurt said, so we've agreed to the, the concept, and if we could add Building 14 to that concept, I think that would greatly help these people who have been you know, doing their best to, to stay afloat and operate there. Um, and thank, thank you, Councilor Turner. You still have the floor, Councilor Turco. I'll, I'll defer to Councilor It's actually Councilor Sharis was next, if that's okay, Councilor Saslow. Uh, Councilor Sharis. Thank you. The, um, I do appreciate your vision because I do think, 
and I'm going to be listening to the ward councillor, but I want you to understand that my thoughts and my views. I do think with the residential uh, component, too, it, it will work. I mean, I've seen it. My own family has lived in that way. Um, two different apartments with uh, a busy, busy area with uh, commercial and businesses and retails and the residents above, and they, they mingle quite well. Uh, I like the, the part when you're talking about moving the door, the front door, onto the other side to separate it. Um, it does clean up the area, and the one thing that people don't want is to live in an area that's um, not vibrant, energy, and, and clean. I don't think it will push out the businesses. I think it would enhance it. Um, and it, so I do believe it would work, but again, as the other councillors have talked and the council of Masoulis have talked, I was nervous about it and maybe would like to see it eased in more or um, as, as my property on King Street to have a neighborhood meeting. I would like to see um, maybe you be open to that. I think more information comes and that people feel more comfortable. One thing I would like is my colleagues here to feel more comfortable about you your proposal um, as comfortable as I am with it because I, I do know it does work and it does bring the people here in that area back to Peabody so who have left and more to come in and like you said those dollars do stay local so thank you yep thank you oh. uh, I, uh, I went to a, um, a, a legislative breakfast uh, a couple of days ago and one of the topics was um, uh, the, the state of um, infrastructure in the downtown area, the state of the, um, uh, the facilities at the high school, um, uh, taxes, funding, development of Peabody in general. And um, I, 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 I don't know enough of, about what, when the mayor was talking about what areas to and to not and what were, were I, I don't know a lot about that. But that, you know, as far as uh, that, the two areas that I was that I, I guess of um, that I would ask the committee just to be open-minded to in discussion. Um, you know, the the question about what, what the affordability would or would not be—that's a very difficult question to ask because it's it's you know it's a matter of planning, build-out, uh, comp, you know, comparable pricing to to you know you can't rent a. a, a, a I don't know how much they would cost. I'm just taking a stab at it based off of, you know, if it's a 1,500 square foot apartment, um, you know, it's, 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 think about what a 1,500 square foot home is to, to rent a month. I mean, it's, you're not gonna, you're not gonna rent a 1,500 square foot home a month for $1,200 a month. Uh, it's, it's gonna be a little bit more. So it all depends on the size of the, you know, of the space, number one. And the types of people moving into these types of properties they are not looking for a whisper quiet solution. You're not gonna go look at a mill, you're not gonna move into a mill building if you're looking to be shut off from the world. You, you expect to move into a vibrant, energetic community that has noise. It's, 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 you, wouldn't, you wouldn't move in there if you were looking for quiet. I can't guarantee uh, that anybody won't complain because everybody's going, you, know, you, you never know, you can't predict that. Um, but the, uh, they, they do work because they're working in other communities. And uh, I would just ask that, you know, to be open-minded, it, will, it will cut down on traffic. And that's a guarantee because we won't move, you know, for every 2,000 square feet of space that we have rented out in the mill, there's an average of four vehicles, you know, in that space. And they're taking trucks coming in and out. So that space would actually cut down on the traffic. That's a given. So we will have less traffic, we'll generate more dollars for tax revenue that will contribute to the high school and to the overall infrastructure of the city. It generates more money. I don't see where it's a negative. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. I think we were with Councilor Saslon next. Thank you. I'm just a little confused because Habitat for Humanity was brought up and are we talking about the restore building habitat for humanity that's up and running? Or are we talk I'm, I'm confused, quite frankly. In the map that I have here, it looks like 58 Pulaski is straight, is right on Pulaski Street. Is the building we're talking about across the street from the, um, the Roadhouse Pub, is, uh, right? So 
now we're thrown in habitat, ha restore habitat, habitat for humanity, 58 rear Pulaski Street. Is that a part of this building or? They're in the back there, I thought. I'm, I'm confused, that's all. And, I, and, I, and we start to add properties in. Yeah. Sure, let's see if uh, Councillor right. Turco wants to clarify that. So, Councillor, it, it's, yes, it is in the back side. I'll, I'll show you, and I'll show this to the whole council in a second. It's this big building in the very rear. These are the buildings that we're addressing in the front. So, Habitat is in this very rear building. That's building number 14. All of these parcels constitute either 58 or 58 rear Pulaski, and each building has a different unit number, let's say, and that's 14. So, I mean, ultimately, I think the goal would be to allow these uses within the, in the industrial park uses, you know, it, maybe not, maybe not throughout the entire city, but anyway, um, I just wanted to add this one building so that we can rectify an issue that we've had with Habitat for Humanity for upwards of a year, I think, now. Um, and, I, and I actually suggested at a recent council meeting that you and Attorney Kelty work together to include this, and I'm surprised that wasn't, um, which is why I'm mentioning this now. But anyway, back to you, Councilor. So we're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, pieces of property that are 58 or 58 rear Pulaski, according to the map I have here? It's, it's, go ahead. Right, I believe 58 rear includes about six lots, correct. 58 Pulaski is the, uh, the property that's on Pulaski, the three buildings that Mr. Greeley owns. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't, without a clear map, I, I'm very uncomfortable right now, I can't, I can't make it. I, I don't understand these four or five buildings. If you want to take a two-minute recess, I really, you know, I'm just confused Sure, let's confused take a two-minute recess. That. We'll meet at the table, please. Mr. Greeley, you're welcome to join us.
All right, councilors, if we could return to our seats, please. All councilors are returned, please. Councilor Sassel, you had the floor. Thank you, I appreciate that. So, um, so I, they've explained to me what they want to, they, they lease a piece of 58 Rear Pulaski. Um, and there's other businesses and other things in there. My only, my only concern is if we, if we throw that in there, now we basically said that that building can now have restaurants and bakeries and ATMs and uh, that's the way I read it. I, I'm, I, you know, I'm more comfortable focused on the 58 and I understand there might be some issues with 58 rear, but just to sit here and to throw it in and now allowing all those other uses that are in 16, that are in 16, excuse me, 6.13.4.1, um, I don't know, that, that I, I, as I sit here tonight, I, I can't, I can't su support that just because of, um, I wasn't expecting that to be thrown in there. And that doesn't mean maybe down the line I can, but as I sit here tonight, I, I, I would not vote uh, to support adding that building at this point in time. Council, thank you, Councilor Sassel. Council McGinn, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so, there's been a lot said uh, tonight um, in support of this. I, I, I can tell you one thing. When I was down there and, and in the prior trips down there, um, they talked about planting flowers and mowing the lawn. They've done a whole heck of a lot more than that. I mean, this is, this is a, a transformative project um, for that building and uh, it's a it's a really great concept I think um, I I am extremely sensitive to um, the reservations that uh, Council Matsoulis has about the residential component and and others have voiced those similar concerns um, but um, along the lines of what was suggested by uh, Councilor Turco um, I'd like to advance something tonight that can, you know, extract the the residential piece of it and allow um, them to allow this to uh, to get into zoning so that we can uh, allow them to uh, make some commitments to tenants and so I mean they've got I think they have some things going that are somewhat time sensitive. And um, I don't think we want to have that as a missed opportunity uh, for the city uh, or for the, or for the business owner. So um, I'd like to I'd like to make uh, I'd like to move in that direction. Um, before I do that, um, with respect to the habitat situation. Um, you know, I, w I was in contact with uh, Mr. Preston from, from Habitat ahead of this meeting. Um, I, I've looked at this. I don't think applying this overlay to, to that building would fix the problem. I, I, there's a dimensional issue. Um, I think the space they're in is larger than what, is larger than what this overlay would permit. So they'd, be, they'd have a similar <laughs> issue. They'd be then coming back for dimensional relief on an overlay, um, so it just it's just going to create another uh, problem. I, I think uh, they had asked. Uh, I had inquired about this um, uh, with Mr. Bellavance, and uh, he was under the impression that Attorney Kelty had uh, a concept that he alluded to the last time he was here, as you recall, Mr. Chairman, um, about a a, uh, a use table. Adjustment that would be different than the one that we than, than we um, did not uh, did not look favorably upon um, that I think would address the habitat issue. So I I I think having looked at it, that's probably a more logical approach, and it wouldn't and it would avoid the uh, kind of this um, 
confusion the council of sas law talked about you know about kind of at the last moment throwing something in and, and, and may perhaps creating a lot of unintended consequences we're dealing with something that's not really before us tonight if we go if we do that so um, so again my my thought process here is to stick with what's before us uh, address the issues that have come up uh, with respect to the residential and to that end um, I would like to make a moat and, and when I uh, refer to this this is the version of the language that uh, mr. Bellavance was referring to uh, during his commentary at the front end of this I would I would make a motion uh, that this committee uh, advance a favorable recommendation uh, on the version of the language that mr. Bellavance uh, was working from uh, during his commentary with the following uh, changes in 6.13 uh, subsection a remove the word residential and remove the word residence uh, in 6.13 subsection e remove uh, the language and residential development <laughs> In 6.13.4.1, uh, remove that section in its entirety. Uh, section, I'm sorry, 6.13.4.1, subsection B, remove that in its entirety. Uh, 6.13.4.2, subsection A, remove that section in its entirety. And then the section that was at the very end, which I believe was uh, and may not be on the version you're looking at, but it was in the version that Mr. Bellavance uh, took us through at the front end of the meeting, 6.13.10, inclusionary zoning, remove that in its entirety. So moved. Any discussion on the motion? Councilor Gravel, please. Yeah, I, I, I can't vote on the motion because I'm not on the committee, but... Uh... I did want to say to you that um, yeah, you are really an example of what this city needs in terms of um, your desire to put forth good good projects. Um, you don't call yourself a developer, and, and uh, you know I, I, I get it, but um, you got a great vision. Um, I tend not to be worried about residential. Um, those things happen. And I do agree 100% with what uh, Council McGinn just said. You are on, it's a transformative moment for the city to take some old industrial style buildings and put them into something that is 21st century. Um, I had kids who lived in loft apartments um, that they, downtown Salem, they wanted the buzz, they wanted the noise, they, they wanted to walk to wherever they go, the restaurants, they didn't need, they didn't want cars. Um, so I, I think you're spot on with your concept and, and looking around and seeing the number of old mill towns, you know, as you travel the state, you know, whether you go to Gardner or whether you go to Springfield or whether you go to, um, you know, Lowell and Lawrence and, um, it's it's a thing that's happening and um, i think it's a great use of that land and that building and and it and while i don't know what the residents would say about other residents i certainly know this those residents have been here tens twenties thirties of times while i've been on this council the last 12 years and have told us what they don't want in there they don't want trucks big trucks, they don't want a bus terminal, they don't want car carriers, they don't want the empty containers that are filled with stuff that are supposed to be empty. They don't want that late night noise of people rumbling in at two o'clock in the morning. So, so we know everything that they don't want. I think it would, it, it, you know, it would behoove us. I think uh, Council McGinn's motion is a good one where you take it out for now, but. I don't want you to lose faith in, in a city that um, you're, you're investing in. Because I've been in your shoes. Um, I put everything I, I, I had up to build a business. 
Um, it's a family-owned business. It's family-run. It's doing very well now. Um, so I know there's the slave and the sacrifice that goes with it. And uh, Council Gould has a similar concept. He, he knows what goes into it. So please, don't take it at that. If it's not there today, it can't be there sometime in the future because I think as you implement concept and people see what you're talking about, they get more comfortable with where you want to go. And it might take a couple of efforts, but uh, really, thank you for choosing Peabody for, for where you want to do this because I, I think you're just what we need. Thank you, Councillor Gravel. Councillor Turco, and Councillor Turco, before you speak, um, it's very admirable of you to look out for habitat. And are you comfortable with the language, Councillor, or what Councillor McGinn said in regards to fixing that problem for habitat? Yes, I, I did speak to uh, Kurt Bellavance, and, and after the meeting, we'll discuss with habitat how we can move forward with. Um, maybe doing this at a later date and in a way that that helps them um, but I, I don't know the uh, the rules on this mr. chairman I just wanted to ask you very briefly prior to the um, the two-minute recess that we took um, lieutenant Dowling had asked if he could speak at the uh, podium and I know we have a motion on the floor but I, I kind of feel bad that we I, I never uh, asked him to come up and he by all means so so on the suspension of the rules can we give him two minutes sure lieutenant Dowling please State your name and address for the record, please. Uh, I'm Christopher Dowling, Lieutenant with the Peabody Fire Department. Um, I'm here to talk about this building because I've been dealing with this building for my whole career. That starts in the early 2000s. And the building was not just in disrepair, it was abandoned. And, but the troubling thing is it was occupied. I compare it to the Elfine building and it could have gone one way or the other. Other owners, they occupied it but they were never compliant, they were difficult to deal with. Uh, we, we've had a lot of illegal activity there in the past, motorcycle gangs, arson. We're not having that now. It, it's a, the building is not completely in compliance the thing that deterred the previous owners, part of it was the cost of the fire protection systems. So we're working with these owners now, Jake and Ed, and they're working with us. And with every tenant that moves in there, the building gets safer. So I think if, I, I believe, I didn't hear the Ward 2 counselor's um, entire motion, but I believe it was to strike the residential. I, I don't know, but if it's... To, any motion that would allow them to continue doing what they're doing, making this once unsafe building even safer, that, that would be in the interest of public safety. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Lieutenant. Appreciate your comments. I can speak to the uh, safety of it. My granddaughter dances in Mr. Greeley's building every week and uh, my wife is so impressed with the uh, facility and the, and the cleanliness and vibrancy of the building so um, keep up the good work so we have a motion on the floor any other comments on the motion or any other discussion in regards to this issue there being none um, roll call vote please Councilors McGinn. Yes. Rosigno. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Motion carries five to nothing. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. So, um, Mr. Bellavance, this is still in committee. We're waiting. Can you have it done by? Mr. Chairman, just point of point of clarification. I, the motion was for a, for a uh, positive recommendation of the full council, so it, that would take it out of committee to the full council for a vote then at, at full council to go to planning board and to advance the proposal. I thought we were waiting for Mr. Bellavance to clean up the uh, clean up the um, paperwork to go to the planning board. The, the uh, 
Mr. Chairman, if I could, uh, the I think the motion provides the edits that will uh, right. be incorporated into what goes to the full council with a positive recommendation, and then we can act on it. And and uh, if it's the will of the council, we can advance it to the planning board at that point in time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other comments, Mr. Bellavance? I just wanted to um, provide to to some of the council members that there still would be two public hearings coming up. And now it'll be, I'm sure it'll be in the newspaper. So, uh, and we've been in contact with some of the neighbors in that area. So they'll, the word will be out and, and we'll, we'll be letting people know and we'll be answering questions and so forth. So just to let everybody know, it is, as it's transparent, so. Take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, motion adjourned.